Hello, hey, everyone. everybody. Woo, we're back. We're so home. excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to stop number two of the Discovery Tour, the Road to Africa podcast day 2022. And we are so, so, so excited, not only because it's our second stop, but because we are stopping in Kenya, our home. Woohoo! We are so <laughs> excited. Um, I, my name is Josephine Karienke, and I'm a co-director at Africa Podfest, which brings you the best in African podcasting live from all over Africa and the world. And I am Melissa Mbugwa, co-director of Africa Podfest, here for all the action today. We cannot wait to showcase everything that we have laid out for you. So to just kind of give you a broad picture of what's happening today, we have a workshop on editing, on podcast editing, um, proudly brought by our sponsors, Hindenburg Systems, um, and their fantastic trainer, Jonathan Hurley, who we'll introduce later. And then we have a podcasting, a podcaster interactive session with podcasters from Semabox, which is a dedicated podcast studio in Nairobi, who are our partners as well. And what do we have? Who else do we have, Joe? Would you like to tell, tell the people who's moderating? Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, many of you told us that you absolutely enjoyed taking notes and learning from the last uh, session we had that featured Zambia's amazing podcasters, including our moderators today from Yellow Ray Digital, Belia and Adele. You'll see them in just a second. And uh, I even know somebody said that they started a podcast immediately after that session last time. So that's yeah. really fantastic. <laughs> Yes, they said they, they learned to edit and were really motivated by the workshop and then by the interactive session. And like two days later, they had a new podcast. So how amazing is that? Uh, what I a treat. Wait. <laughs> exactly, exactly. 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 Um, Thank you to those of you who have joined in already. Um, grab your beverage, grab your snacks, get comfortable, tell your friends to join because they're in for a really amazing time. Yes, and our uh, deep thanks to Africa No Filter. Africa Podfest is an Africa No Filter narrative champion. They are supporting us on this whole discovery tour as well as the Road to Africa Podcast Day. So thank you, Africa No Filter, and our fellow narrative champions are across Africa and around the world. So without all the time in the world, we're gonna jump uh, into our uh, introduction of our main moderators for today. You know them, you love them, uh, and we appreciate them deeply, the fantastic ladies of Yellow Ray Digital. Welcome sure. ladies. Yes. I can't hear your voices. Hey, voices. I think everybody's waiting. Ah. Like... <laughs> we entered with a muted mic. That's what you know. We're just too excited. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Hi, we're so excited to have you. Hello. We're Welcome. Excited. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. So exciting. We're so happy to know that there's actual people out there starting podcasts after like looking at the sessions and being a part of the vibe. That's what we signed up for. Yeah. Exactly. And this is why we're here because at the end of the day, yeah. it's about making noise, mm -hmm. about making, you know, mm -hmm. giving podcasters a mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. So this is amazing. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. Fantastic. Yeah. We can't wait to have you on moderating the, the, the rest of the program. I would also like at this point to introduce just to kickstart our first very exciting session, which is a podcast editing workshop. I would like to introduce Jonathan Hurley. Jonathan Hurley graduated from Berkeley College of Music in 2004. And he worked for 10 years recording music, film scores, and other audio projects. He has been the digital production specialist for Perkins School for the Blind, where he oversaw all training and audio-related matters for the studio. He currently works for Hindenburg, where he develops and leads training programs for podcast and audiobook production. 
You are in very good hands for this workshop, as you have heard. And I will, without further ado, pass the baton on to Jonathan, who is going to be live on the screen shortly. Take out your... Hi, Jonathan! Hello, hello. Welcome. Everybody. Hi. Welcome. Yes, last time um, we had someone send us a message and tell us they were so inspired by your workshop that they went and started a podcast like two days later. Um, uh, yeah, they spent like two days just like in the zone. So we we know we know it's 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 hitting people in the right places, and so we're very excited and thankful that you could be here again today. Oh, thank yes. you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, I have my yeah. notebook. <laughs> You have your <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I know. Um, I know. I'm going to throw a lot of things at you. And you know, the whole hope is that, you know, you get to do just like the person in that store. You you take control. You get to do it on your own, you know, and, and you can hopefully just start making your own content. So hopefully I'll talk about some universal things. And, of course, I'm going to talk about Hindenburg and um, make your life a little bit easier so you can make your podcasts. Amazing. Okay. Take it away, Jonathan. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so yes, thanks uh, for having me here. I am, uh, as we talked about, um, you know, a musician, and I got into audio uh, books and podcasts um, kind of through that. I worked at a recording studio. And a lot of people who get into the kind of professional recording space, uh, that's often their tale is something like that, you know. And um, the thing is, so with that, um, uh, just one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of recording um, software and programs and things, you know, they weren't really designed for folks who wanted to tell a story, interview, you know, different people, uh, maybe do a news production or that kind of thing. So, you know, you open up maybe a uh, recording program, you're looking at all of this and it's very confusing and it's talking about bit rates and things and you're like, I don't know, I just want to tell a story or do something like that. And so the whole approach of Hindenburg is to hopefully make that a bit easier for you and uh, make your life a bit better. So it's uh, the company I work for, you know, and we're happy to be a sponsor. Um, it's, it's about, uh, we make a software that's kind of like quality of life improvement hacks. Okay. That's kind of the approach. And I'm going to show you it and show you things to do and all of this and, and some kind of general approaches. So the idea is, I hope what you can get out of this is that, um, it's a little less intimidating, right? Uh, you know, looking at audio and doing all this stuff. Okay. So the first things first, I'm just going to share my screen. I thought what I do today is just kind of show you like a finished product a little bit of, um, uh, and by the way, Josephine or anybody out there, if I, you know, screw up and I'm not sharing my screen and I'm talking about specific stuff and, uh, go ahead and come back on and let me know. Um, but, uh, so here we have, this is a, this is a, what I'm talking about. This is a, um, a session that has a lot of parts and a lot of tracks and all this stuff. It has all of these different things saved over here, which are little clips of audio. You've got all these um, bits of like city sound and music and things that come in and all this stuff. And we'll get into some of these details here. But the idea is that with with a lot of improvements to, you know, the technology, um, it used to be that this this stuff was pretty hard to get into if you weren't already into audio. And now it's really not. It's really not difficult to um, get in there and do edits and uh, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully I can show you some things that that make that easy. So if this if this is what a finished product looks like, and I'm going to show you like how to grab multiple parts and do all these different things to it. Um, let's just start with a new blank session with uh, nothing. Okay. And there's a reason that um, I want to do that. All right. So here is this. Uh, whoops. Sorry about that. So here is um, the whole approach here is that, you know, it's podcasting made easy. Right. And so Hindenburg is a DAW. And whenever you hear that term, it means uh, just digital audio workspace. It just means um, the tool that you use to record your stuff into and edit it and then put it out into the world. OK. So some of what we're going to talk about today is um, there are a few things. I mean, some of it is dealing with, uh, well, how would I just turn it on and do some basic recording? I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I feel like most people know that, but I'll just briefly go over it. And then we'll talk about, you know, what happens when you're, you know, dealing with maybe 
you're you have a few people in the same place and you want to you know uh do a recording of that okay so here's an example of what we mean by that jamie well i just skipped over it <laughs> um i'll just show you what we mean by that okay so um i'll just get into uh how to you know record multiple microphones uh do some multi-track editing something called um magic levels and um put in some uh how you know you would take music in and out and uh how you can use some of the tools that are in hindenburg all right so here is a uh, hindenburg session all right so this is with nothing uh this is just kind of how it comes up I, i'm not sure the clipboards even come up it might even just look like that okay i'll show you how to bring that thing back and all this stuff so it comes kind of like preloaded with a few different tracks and that makes sense because you know uh just makes your life easy, but you could take them away or add more. It's really easy to do that. Um, but the idea is that they're kind of preloaded with probably the amount of stuff you'd need. If you had like two people who were having a chat, maybe you have another couple tracks for like ambiance or anything like that. Okay. So you might notice that in other recording programs, there's there are all these other options that are up here and there just sort of aren't in Hindenburg. It doesn't look like there are a lot. And that's kind of by design. Um, and up here, this all these menus here, uh there there are always going to be drop down menus so you can get to parts of the program and do different things but you're not you know inundated with with uh so many options so that's the idea again the whole approach is that you don't have to think about things all that much okay and then another couple of kind of key components of of hindenburg are that this thing that I brought up here, which you can get to if you have it and want to follow along, uh, it's in the view dropdown. Uh, there's this option for clipboards. That's what I brought up here. And there's this option for favorites, okay, which is what I have here. I'm just going to drag, I'm just storing some audio in there so I can just drag it out. Or I could just, you know, turn on a, uh, a track and start recording. I could do that too, right? So um, if I did that, all right, if I recorded this track and went down here and pressed record, this would just be um, recording me, okay, doing my thing. So this is now recording me speaking. Um, that'd be a bit of audio there. That's how you do it. It's pretty, that part's pretty similar in most um, most recording programs. So you'd select the mic that you want to speak into, and this is going to find all these other microphones that you might have. I kind of have a lot here, uh, and I'll talk about this thing later. But um, this is the one I'm speaking into. So you just kind of select it. It also finds it automatically, which makes life pretty easy. And then you basically record, you arm the track by pressing that. Uh, and then you you just start recording. That's pretty pretty similar in all of these. But what's different is something like uh, the waveform itself, the actual thing here, OK? Uh, this, uh, the region. So uh, this this piece of audio, right, that I have here. Um, so in other programs, the way that you would do things like turn it down, um, fade it in and out, uh, other things like that, is you have to like open up other menus and things like that and, and or other tools. And a lot of that makes sense because again, these DAWs are designed for music production. So you need to do all these specific things. But the idea with Hindenburg is that it's designed for podcasting production. So instead of all of that, it makes it so that your the mouse, when I'm mousing around here and just moving around, it turns into this multi-tool. So if I'm at the bottom, I can highlight different things. Okay, so that's how I would cut, make a cut of something. Um, and that's really easy to, so you make this selection piece, right? And even if I make a selection, I can click around in other areas, do other things. Um, and that selection is kind of still there. If I want it to go away, I just press escape and it's gone. Uh, but you would make a selection and that's how you would then cut the piece that you wanted to get rid of, okay? Uh, for example, because that's why you need to have the ability to do a highlight. Um, this also though, uh, there are always like different ways of doing it. Some people don't like clicking and dragging, which is what I'm doing. What you also could do is wherever you wanted to make a selection to let's say cut something out you could click somewhere and press i and click somewhere else and press o and that'll make that selection there too and you can always grab these the tops of these as well and move them around and stuff okay so sometimes you need to do that but sometimes you need to just grab the whole thing and move it around so if i click on the 
right on the region and move it. I can move it to different tracks or move it in and out or anything like that. And another, this one's really um, a big little, a little thing that's a big thing, which is that if you want to turn the volume of this particular thing up, you just grab the top and pull it up. It's really easy. And uh, one of these things, there are many of these little functions that I wish every DAW had the option of. Um, and sometimes you want to just uh, hide some part of a track. Like you don't need that other part. You just want it here. And it's always there, you know, so you can always trim it out. So that's this little trimmer tool here. And then you do fades and things just by grabbing the region itself. So that's, again, a bit different. The way it works in other programs is you, have, you open up these other windows and you're adding something called automation so you just don't do that here you just grab the thing you want to fade in and you just pull it um so again that the approach is like is that how can you make this so that it's um easy to work with right so that's the whole idea and how would you record two people in the room at the same time you do just the same thing that we did up here in this top track except you'd select a different microphone let's say uh my computer microphone and then now I can record on these two tracks together. And whenever, then I can, you know, come down here and there's a shortcut for that, but I can just press record and it's going to record. Um, it's also doing something that's called pre-roll here. So this is recording me on two different microphones. All right. So uh, it's also doing something there when I recorded, which is an important detail, um, which is called auto leveling. Okay, so you don't have to have that on. You can choose to turn it off. But the idea is that um, it is taking all audio that you put into Hindenburg and it's um, it's putting it at like uh, uh, it, ha it has a range that it, of loudness that it's it's taking those uh, regions and putting them to. So you saw that it took one of them and pulled it down. Sometimes it'll pull it up a little bit. And it's very good for a number of things, one of them being matching yourself from take to take to take. So if you're doing some narration, like I've been just talking and talking and talking here for a while. Um, but I, you know, if I was recording this into a podcast, I probably would do starts and stops. Okay. And in doing that, when I you know, have one take to another to another, even if you have good mic placement, which is important, like just being consistent in on the mic. Um, it's going to be a, a different from take to take to take, and this auto levels it. It makes it so that they're all in the same region. And then also, uh, I'm sure you've heard podcasts or shows or something that's not recorded so well. So you have somebody who has a really big, loud voice, and then maybe it's a guest or somebody else, and their voice is much quieter. I just listened to a podcast today that I absolutely love. It's a comedy podcast, and and it's a pretty popular one too. And one of the there were sort of four hosts. And one of them was just really quiet. And, you know, this kind of alleviates that. It, it makes so that, in theory, they're, they're all in the same um, ballpark, okay? So that's what that's what it's there for. Again, make your life easy. Set it and forget it. Okay, so let's say I was doing some of that narration and I wanted to, um, I wanted to uh, do like a re-record because that's going to happen, right? Um, so I would find the space and where I wanted to do that. That's why you need to have like play and rewind and all this stuff that's down here. And there are keyboard shortcuts for all these things too. Okay. But whenever you find your place, um, you then roll here. So this is recording. So what it did is, uh, I, I started to record again, right? Just like I did before. But if you notice, um, I mean, I'll, I'll go back and do that again. It did something called pre-roll, which means that wherever I put this white line, which is the playhead, that's where it's going to pick up the recording from. Okay. And that's pretty similar in most uh, recording programs because it has to know, hey, where do you want to start again? You know? So uh, let's say I found my spot here. I like where that is. It's a spot in between sentences or where I made my mistake. I'm going to start it again, but it's going to play for a couple of seconds before that. That's just called punch and roll. Um, or pre-roll, and you can set this up and change this very easily. So once I find my spot, I start recording also again. Also doing something that's called... Okay, so then I would be able to match myself, and uh, that's that's kind of the whole idea there. All right? So um, before I move on, maybe I should just check in with uh, everybody here. All right? Just to make sure that I'm not yammering on and on and on, and... Uh, um, 
Nobody knows what the heck I'm talking about. Okay. So I uh, just wanted to check in, um, you know, please uh, in the chat there, um, please add some uh, question, any questions that you have, um, you know, the, the folks will interrupt me and, and uh, you know, let, we'll answer your questions as we're, as we're going along. Cause I love questions and I'd love to be talking about exactly the things that you want to do. And like I said, maybe some of these technical things might be a, a hurdle and maybe I can make it so that your life's a little easier and you can actually, you know, make your show or just make your life better while making your show. So, all right, I'm going to keep going here then. Okay. So. Right. So let's say we've got this and we've got uh, a few people and they've been having a, a chat here, right? Uh, so how do you go about editing them and, you know, dealing with some of this stuff? So I'm just going to copy some things just to make sure that I have more of it. And uh, by the way, the way I did that, just grab different regions. And this is pretty universal, actually. So if you hold the shift key down, you can grab more than one thing. And um, there's a way of uh, doing these copies and um where you can easily copy things around by doing something called option dragging um which is i'm just holding the option key or alt key on windows and and just dragging it or you could just copy paste just like go a word document right so now i've got these uh this is all me but let's just pretend it's four people that are um chatting here okay and I, I need to, I want to start doing some edits to like the whole group. But like, let's say I want to get rid of this space here. Well, if I highlight on this top track and I get rid of it, I'm going to do a cut. That's what these uh, icons are up here. They're like common editing things uh, that you would have to do. So cut, copy, paste. Again, the approach is like kind of like Microsoft Word or, or some other text document. Okay. So let's say I make a highlight here and I cut on this top track. Very cool, very good. The only problem is it's now this track is out of sync with the rest of them in terms of the space. Um, that's what's going to happen when you're getting into editing and you'll probably start you know, pulling your hair out because it's very frustrating to have to deal with that. So that gets into this world of uh, multi-track editing. And all it means is that when you do an edit on one track, instead of doing an edit on one track, like what I did here, where I cut this away and now this is out of sync with the rest of it see the end how that's not you know lining up anymore um i could have it stretch across a few tracks or all the tracks okay so one way to do that is to click and drag uh from the top and you see how before when i did this uh it was just on that top track but now it stretches on all of them and over here you can see that all four tracks are highlighted right so then when i do an edit it cuts it away and they all shift together. So that's that's one way of doing that. But some people don't like to um, do it with the mouse. You can make mistakes. You can exit. You can think you got it all, but you left out the bottom track or something like that. And you go, oh, okay, I did it. Oh, no, it's not working anymore or whatever. Okay, so another way of doing this is this thing called linking tracks. Okay, so linking tracks uh, means that when I click on each different track like let's say the second one here and i make an edit it's going to only affect the second track okay see that and you can see that only that one is highlighted but if i hold down uh shift again and i select this top track and then i link these two together now it means that if, it, if i do a a highlight it will cut on both of the top two tracks because those two are now linked and if i take something to move it it's going to move it for both of them Okay, so you could do that, and you could do that for all the tracks. You could just link them all, and then when I make this edit, it's going to affect all of the tracks. And if you don't want to do it, you can, un or if you uh, want to turn it off, basically, you can always unlink the tracks, and then you can link them and that kind of stuff. So you unlink the tracks, you link the tracks up, and they'll all just cut together. Grab something, they'll all move together. Uh, so that's a way of doing that as well, where you can link certain tracks. You can also link individual ones. Like I could link the first track and the third track 
if you if I wanted to. Okay. So just again, there's always gonna be a couple of ways of of approaching things that are like they're designed to make your life easy. We hope. Okay. So I'm gonna just show one other thing here, and then I'm gonna start talking about these clipboards and all this kind of business. All right. But uh there's this tool um that is here that is called magic levels okay and so uh it's a pretty cool thing so let's say you're in you're doing a a, a round table recording right and all that means is that like two people or more are in the same place and they're recording so i'm speaking into my microphone right and the the types of microphones you should use for vocal audio stuff is not the same type of microphone you'd want to use if you were like trying to record and capture a lot of like natural sound of like the the place okay now the reason for that is that i want as much of my voice and as little of everything except my voice as i can get okay so um with that in mind the re what you're trying to do there is to eliminate something called bleed and bleed is when um when you have uh I'm going to, I'm going to, I have a file that's a good example of it. So bleed is when you have two people talking in the same place, but they're, um, uh, one sec here. You're hearing a little bit of, of, of somebody else's microphone on your track. Okay. So this looks pretty similar to the thing we were just looking at, but these are four, instead of just me talking, these are four different people who are having a chat here. Right. So if I just listen to this top track, and this, and we're only hearing this top track. I'm Stephen Licardi. I'm a social worker, spoken word poet. Okay, so that's what it sounds like. But when I unsolo it, that's what soloing is, by the way. You're only hearing that one track. Now I'm hearing, I'm going to hear this same thing, but his microphone, you can see it in the file. It's being picked up by the other microphones or his voices. So now when I play the file. I'm Stephen Licardi. I'm a social worker, spoken word poet, and performance activist. I don't know how well that comes across in like hearing it, you know, through our uh, system here, but you know, uh, what you're hearing is this kind of echoey sound that happens, right? So, um, what you could do is you could just like turn down or cut away his voice from other people's microphones, but that's pretty tedious, you know, especially let's say these four people just chatted for an hour and a half. That's a lot of cutting. That's a lot of dealing with it, right? So one thing you could do uh, here, Hindenburg has this, again, with these kind of things in mind, is you just select everything. By the way, I did that by pressing Option, Command, and A. And uh, under Tools, there's this drop-down menu here where Tools, you have this thing where you can put this magic levels on. Okay, and this is what it does. And the idea with it is that it, it takes his voice here on this top track uh and it isolates the things around it so it's saying okay he this is this person speaking in this track here is where he's speaking again where he's not speaking we're going to turn it down and you can turn the amount of it up and you can adjust it and it you can see that it adjusts it okay so now when you listen to it i'm stephen licardi i'm a social worker spoken word poet and performer it sounds a lot more like what it did when it was soloed. So you're not hearing it in the other, other tracks. Okay. So that's the idea uh, with Hindenburg and the kind of whole approach. All right. Um, I'll get into music a little later uh, just with like what you do with it, how you bring it in, all that kind of stuff. Okay. But basically um, with, with some of this, you would, you would know how to do some edits. Uh, you know, you could, do some multi-track editing, uh, that magic levels thing. Again, makes your life easy. Some of this is sort of set it and forget it. Uh, so really, you just kind of have to do it and deal with it once. But in real life, um, you may have, I mean, we're doing this remotely, right? I am not in Africa uh, right now. I am in the United States. And I'm almost sure in a very different time zone than uh, where you're seeing this because uh, the sun is starting to rise behind me. So um uh, that's the reality of our world, right? You're not going to be in the same place with people um, all the time. So one thing we do want to show you is this, um, uh, how you can do remote recording, what we're calling a phone interview, although it's really like Zoom or Skype or anything like that, 
and you can actually go directly into Hindenburg. Okay, so I, there's a little video that makes it a little easier to uh, demonstrate. I'm just going to play that. Charles Bolden is a former astronaut this is what and NASA we mean director by a and told us about the strategy. During the Obama administration, we targeted Mars as the ultimate destination for humanity, but said we would spend 10 years. So obviously those people are not in the same place, right? So how did, how would you do that if you you know had Hindenburg and you wanted to record somebody for your podcast, but they weren't here? Well, the idea is pretty similar to what I showed you before, where instead of selecting two different microphones, now you're going to... Uh, there's one more step, which is whatever program you're using, if it's Skype or Zoom or whatever, um, in Hindenburg, you, you're going to set the uh, input. Instead of um, selecting a microphone, you're going to do this thing called audio uh, device. I'll show you that in a video in a second. And then the output of whatever, Zoom or something, it, sometimes it says speakers. Wherever the sound comes out of, you just say Hindenburg for that. And once you do that, it'll record that audio directly into a track. So um, here's an example of that. So you have a Mac and you would like to do a remote interview. This is now a lot easier with the latest release of Hindenburg. Hindenburg now comes with its own audio device that will let you route sound from applications like Zoom, or Skype directly into Hindenburg. If you're new to Hindenburg, this might not sound like a big deal, but if you have been with us for some time, then you might have encountered Soundflower. But that is no longer needed, and the latest installation of Hindenburg can even remove Soundflower from your computer. In the input selector, we find a few changes. One is that Soundflower is no longer there, but more interestingly, we find a new device that is called Other Applications. This is the Hindenburg audio device. So how do we use it? Let's try to record a call from Skype. In the audio settings in Skype, we set the output here called Speakers to Hindenburg. And that's all there is to it, really. Back in Hindenburg, we can record using other applications. If you are recording a Zoom call, FaceTime call, Google call, or anything else call, then it's the same procedure. Set the output in the application you're using to Hindenburg, and in Hindenburg, record from other applications. We do hope that you'll enjoy this new feature. Okay, so hopefully that makes some amount of sense to everybody here. Um, I'm just going to check in again before I move on. Make sure that this all kind of makes sense. Um, so any questions that come up, please put them in the chat. Let us know uh, so we can, you know, so I'm just not yammering on about things that kind of don't matter. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to keep going then. All right, so here, uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again. All right, and we're going to talk a little bit about, in Hindenburg, what would you do then? Let's say, however you did it, right? You had your, uh, you have your show there. You've got your interviews. Either they came in via the phone or... Or, you know what I mean, like Skype or Zoom, or you had uh, somebody in the room with you, it's just the two of you having a chat, or there's a third person and that kind of thing. How would you start assembling the pieces that you would want maybe and start cutting out the pieces that you don't want, which is essentially what editing is, right? That's really, it, I haven't thought about this, but that's probably just a good definition of it. Keeping the parts you want and putting them in the order that you want. So, you know, you can manipulate that so, you know, it's not just that you press record and it's all gold from there on out. That's just not real life. Uh, real life is taking the bits that you want and, you know, manipulating the audio so it flows the way that you want to. We'll get into a bit of like story structure and stuff in, in just a minute. Um, so how would you do that? So one, the the most popular kind of way of looking at that is this ABAB format, okay? Um, 
you know, so it's going to basically bounce between different people speaking. OK, so this is an example of that. Students who've been forced to self-isolate at Manchester Metropolitan University say they fear they'll run out of food and basic necessities. Around 1,700 students living in two halls of residence received an order last night to remain in their rooms for two weeks after almost 100 people tested positive for COVID-19. That figure now stands at 127 confirmed cases. Public health officials worried about the outbreak spreading beyond the campus say they plan to carry out mass testing. Our education correspondent Dan Johnson has spent the day at the university. This is only day one. Yeah. So you've got alcohol. In the accommodation blocks of the Burley campus, students are locked down and getting fed up. Judging by the letters HMP posted in one window, some are starting to feel imprisoned too. Nadia's a first year student who only moved in two weeks ago. We've barely got any milk and bread to last us till Monday. We can't do our washing. I mean, it's a bit pathetic because if they knew this was going to happen, there was no point of us even coming here. And further down the block, Ben's in a flat of eight, already cut off for a week after one of the first cases here. Three more days left and then we were going to be out and then they just announced that we're going to have to stay here for a couple more weeks. It's a bit stressful, to be honest. Officials say they had to move quickly to isolate these students so they could stop the virus spreading to the local community. David Regan is Manchester's Director of Public Health. OK, so that's the idea there. All right. Um, you know uh, what those sorts of things are like. Now, maybe you're not going to produce a news broadcast like that. Maybe you will. I don't I don't know what you're doing. But uh, even if you didn't do that, you probably would do something where you needed to take pieces of the audio, say the best that you want, and then assemble them, put music to it, put um bumpers meaning like um intro and outro bits and all this stuff and you know just make your show uh commercial breaks whatever that happens to be okay everyone's thing is going to be different so let's just start off with how would you do it how would you do it okay so let's just we're gonna start with one track show you some of these cool little tricks and features and and then get into the other stuff so the first thing is, this is uh, somebody that spoke and they were doing a bit of narration and they did multiple takes. So they press record and you're going to keep the bits that you want. He points to a thin white line. When he was 15, when he was 15, Sadaka was sewing a button on some fabric. Okay, so you hear, here she says, when he was 15, and then when he was 15, she does it again. Okay, she does the take, wants to do it better, made a mistake, whatever. Okay, does it again. Um, so the beauty i just i'm zooming in when you see me do that uh you do that by by the way for those folks who are playing along at home uh, i'm pressing command plus and minus that's what these little magnifying glasses are here and you can make it go up and down vertically by pressing shift command plus and minus at least that's what i'm doing okay so uh this bit here um let's say i want to keep this bit when he was 15. okay so that's the part i want to keep and by the way also, if you are doing this, you can, when you make one of these selections, if you press shift and space bar, so if you press space bar, it plays, the playhead just goes from wherever, okay? But if you press shift and space bar, you make one of these selections. When he was 15. It just plays that selection. That's going to be really useful for when you're putting on effects and stuff, which we'll get to in a little bit. So if I wanted to take this and um, keep kind of a collection of all my different clips, that's what the clipboard is for. You can kind of put all these pieces in there and then pull them all out again to kind of assemble and put together. Okay. And we have these workshops that we do. Um, and I would definitely join our Facebook uh, community for that. Uh, just to find out about that. They're free. And we even have to like, you know, trials of the software and stuff. So you can just try it out. The reason I'm mentioning that is that if I'm talking about this stuff and it's a little abstract, um, when you do those workshops, you do it. I mean, I open up files, I show you what to do, and then you open up the same exact file and you do it yourself. So you get, um, you kind of learn editing, you know, hands on, which is the definitely the best way to do it. So, you know, I want to take this clip and keep it. And then I'm going to want to keep a collection of these. Well, that's what this clipboard is for. And you can do all kinds of things. You can, you can just drag it in here like this um, and leave it in the file. Or you could take a selection here and you could, press a different button and pull it out of the file. Um, the way I'm doing that is I'm pressing option 
and then I'm dragging it into the clipboard. And there's even something better, which is there's a key command for this, which is that I'm pressing Option Command, and it, on Windows it's just uh, Alt and Control. And then um, these clipboards are numbered one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna put them in by pressing like the number. That's just the number three. And I say, oh, I need this clip. I put that in the fourth one. Put this in the first one. I mean, you can start doing this very fast if you. Um, especially with that key command. I mean, whatever, you know, you can see that. So that's the idea. Like, look, I'm, I'm populating this clipboard here, right? With all these different things. And then if this was gone, you could, um, you could, let's say, then I just took the clips I wanted to, you know, keep. And I got rid of this, but it's never gone in, um, you know, the way audio is now okay but the idea is that you can then take your clips out and then assemble it right and you could play your little clips here to hear what you took now he owns the factory just oh sadaka's sister and which one? Oh, i want this piece then you take that and you put it there and you can rename these of course too right you can say like uh you know clip one and clip two and all that stuff however you want to do it you can just get organized which is it seems like a small thing but it's not it's 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 a big thing because you can organize your whole project here using this very fast so that you don't have to um, get all involved with like you've got a big long piece of audio you're trying to like save different pieces on another track and then like assemble it later it's so much easier to do this that's the idea with the clipboard um, and how you would put together something like that example we looked at which is the A B A B format you'd have like you speaking on top and then going in between you and your guest right and you can start um moving these and uh around if you you know select uh these two together you can move them around um and you can uh keep the timing of things very easy and then i'm going to show you something that's even cooler which is let's say you had a whole segment here this might even have like ambient noise or something like that you can take all these clips that are here um in the second workshop we do the advanced one we call it putting together um uh scenes like looking through the camera uh lens like a director and you line up these different scenes with things like background sound and music and stuff you can take the entire thing and drag it into a clipboard um and pull it out again you know so you could do all the editing and keep it there and then just pull it back out okay so that's the idea with like things that hopefully make your life easier um, as, as we're doing stuff, okay? So quality of life improvement hacks, uh, that's what I called it Students at the beginning. Students who've been forced to self-isolate at Manchester it's Metropolitan University. I want to, okay. So this is what, uh, um, so that's how you would do some of these things where you would, uh, this after you record an interview, you could edit, you can use these clipboards and build these montages so you can craft a story and take your production to you know a, a deeper place than not just um just you speaking so here's the idea of what we're talking about this would be like a wide shot So all those fun sounds um, are things that uh, they might seem silly, but when you add those things in, the podcasts or news productions, like let's say Radio Lab, which has an awful lot of uh, production value to it, there are kind of two major parts. One of them, this is all getting into like sound design, and one of them is, of course, uh, music. A lot of podcasts have ambient music, um, little background things that uh, they hire people like me to make. And, uh, but the other part of that, of course, is, uh, you know, background sounds like, um, like what we just talked about, like city sounds and all this. So you can take your listener on a journey. And so what we're looking at here is, uh, this story structure. Okay. So, um, I'm going to show you some tools in Hindenburg that can help you, um, map this out a little bit, but mapping out your podcast, basically making an outline, which is what we're looking at here, um, is, is an important thing to do if you want to get to the next place. And this is true even in um, a, a comedy podcast or something frivolous. This doesn't have to be a drama piece. Um, 
even, I mean, I was just referencing that I listened to this comedy podcast, which is really, really silly. There's absolutely a structure to that. I mean, this they have also a time that they're trying to meet and they have, you know, advertisers that they're trying to they put in there. They need you need to have, you know, a structure. So outlining your story, um, we're probably all familiar with that in some way for you know writing, but this is how you would do it in in the audio piece too. And I'll show you how to put this stuff in there. Um, but this is the idea is that you'd have some type of impact at the beginning, even if it's you joking around or something that would get me, the listener to be drawn into the podcast. Um, and then this P O N R thing just means the point of no return. Like after you kind of introduce what the thing is about, then you're just into it. Okay. And at some point there's going to be a conflict or escalation or some type of thing that wants to, uh, you put in there so that your listener will get to the end of your podcast, hopefully, and you'll take them on a journey and whatever the climax of this is, you kind of bring them there. And then there's an outro. Okay, so how you would do that in uh, in Hindenburg is uh, by putting in these uh, things called markers and cue points and things. And then I'll get into how you would do this with like nudging things around. All right. So uh, let's look at this um, kind of finished one. All right. Maybe first. Okay, so here's this like kind of finished project. Okay, so now you know like, okay, this is what those groups are with like clipboards all this um, ambi thing here, this is just, these are like ambient sounds, like steam pressing sounds, okay, and things like that. And you can see how you can just, you start dragging things out. Well, this orange bit here is a marker. So if you think of that image that we looked at, um, you can add these markers in. And it's very easy to do. You just press command return, wherever that white line is, and it'll put it in a marker. So markers, unlike the regions, it, and that just means these bits of audio here, um, the markers, you don't hear them. They're just kind of marking the timeline. And you see the timeline up here, right? So some DAWs, of course, they're going to be made for music. So they're going to show things like bars and beats. That's not really relevant to um, you know making a podcast of you and your friend talking, right? There's no bar five. So the what is in Hindenburg is just the timeline. The time code is the part that does matter. Like, how long is this podcast? You're right here. It's 30 seconds long. Okay, so you put markers in where you want that to be. And there's a markers list for any markers that you put in and you can rename them, you know, like uh, here's my point or no return. Okay, this is my, okay, uh, intro. All right, that's the idea there. So things like that, um, you mark up your story and when you rename them, they're just kind of in the story. And then you can line up your clips and things to, to kind of go, you know, where you want them to go. That's the idea uh, with kind of having an outline there. And then there's this very cool thing too, which is something called a cue point, all right? So what a cue point is, it, it's just like a marker, okay? I just put one on this region here. And you see how it's blue? The difference is a marker stays in the timeline because it's just marking like, okay, about 30 seconds into this thing, we want the music to start or we want to introduce our guest or whatever. Um, you know, uh, everything has a structure like that or else it'd just be chaos, okay? So a cue point means like you put that on the region and it stays on the region. So as I keep moving this around, it stays there. And the reason you want to do that is that you, let's say you know, oh, right when this person says whatever they're saying here, um, I, that's when I want, oh, Christmas tree to start, okay? So this person, uh, whoever this is, is saying uh, something or other here. Let's, uh, okay, so right when they start here. Daka was sewing a button on some fabric. Right when she says sewing a button on some fabric. That's when I want Oh Christmas Tree to start. Daka was sewing a button on some fabric. And he's Beautiful. I'm um, Hopefully you do something better than that. But then let's say I liked that and I knew that's when this thing was going to uh, need to happen, but I didn't like where it was. Well, then you can just grab this and grab this and move them around and you keep the spacing together. And you could just move your individual regions and parts, okay? That's the idea there. Uh, the There are all these other tools too, like you can grab whole sections of things, uh, like from this region to the end, and you can nudge them all around like this, and the whole thing will shift over together. I'm doing that by holding uh, Command or Control and pressing the arrow keys. Um, you also can time stretch the regions, which means that 
when I'm at the side of it here, sometimes something doesn't quite cut just right. Um, and if you uh, grab the end here, you can actually uh, stretch out the region. So this is going to sound like blah, 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 because I've actually made the audio. It's elastic. I made it like longer or you could speed it up and go the other way, too. You can make it shorter. So she'll to a thin white line on his right hand. You can speed it up that way. Uh, individuals parts, because sometimes that happens just for something to flow better. So, again, all these little like clever things where you just kind of grab the region just kind of make it do what you want so you can get out the door faster, okay? Oh, I should show just ducks and beds and stuff. Um, what that means is that if I, uh, oftentimes, especially with music, right? Well, we got some music here. Beautiful old Christmas tree. So uh, typically, you want to, like, fade in some music at the beginning, right? That's usually what happens. Um, when he was 15, Sadak... Well, usually it's like this faded in music, and then, and then this thing happens, right? So it's like... When he was 15, Sadaka was sewing a button on... Okay, so something like that often happens, right? Hopefully you use better music than this. But uh, what also happens is basically this thing called a, a duck or and a bed, okay? So what that means is that there's a bed of music underneath this person speaking, often at the intro of a podcast. Um, and instead of having to automate that, like in another window, you just kind of highlight the... Here's where she's speaking... And I want to just duck that music down. All I did was, let's go back a step. I made a highlight of where I want it to, to duck in underneath her speaking, and I just ducked it down. Okay, so now when I play this from here. When he was 15, Sadaka was sewing a button on some fabric, and he stuck his finger. And then it comes back in afterwards. Okay, so this is a bad example of it, but that's how you would do that. All right, so after that, you know, um, you're, you're going to want to uh, probably clean it up. Um, and this is an area that's really confusing for a lot of folks. And I'm going to stop talking in a bit so we can have some time for questions. Um, but uh, just to show a couple of things of what what you do here. So uh, cleaning up the sound. Um, and what we mean by that is like applying effects. So again, the effects that are here are all meant uh, with vocal audio in mind. So there's no effects that are made really for music. Okay. So, so they launched a website called One Frame of Fame. On the site, you're presented with one frame from. Uh, what we had there is like uh, this example I'll show you in just a second. Um, but the idea is that you could start crafting very elaborate Metro shows. Like five, six, six, six. Is now ready for boarding at Metro. Okay, so let me just show you. Um, on a new session here. All right, so uh, remember when I showed you all that clipboard stuff? The favorites window, which is this, works exactly the same with one other detail, which is that let's say you did this with your music and your uh, your intro. New Year. I mean, if you ask me, it's more important than Christmas. I really you know, feel very excited. Let's just say that was the outro or intro to your show. You actually only have to edit it one time because, as you can see here, I actually can just drag it into the favorites window just as it is and then just drag it out again. Okay. So that's a really handy, um, you know, way of, of uh, doing things there. Uh, you know, it's like just edit it one time, especially if it's uh, like introducing a guest or a different segment to your show and that kind of thing okay so here's this bit of really noisy audio hopefully you don't record this way but these things do happen okay so with this background noise on the site you're presented with one frame from the video okay so uh you can hear all this like hissing and all that kind of stuff so the plugins which are located here uh these effects they're all in one spot right here um and these ones on top will come with the program and so like this one, the noise reduction plugin, which I'm going to show you here, it's just one knob. And again, the idea is like, instead of getting bogged down in details here, it's very easy to use. So if you turn this up and we listen to that same piece of audio on the site, you're presented with one frame from the video. You okay. And then here's with it off on the site, you're presented with one frame from the video. So that's the idea. It's taking out the background noise and the other effects work the same way. They're very easy to use. That was the uh, the idea. 
Uh, one other part is that this thing called a voice profiler, which is um, here, this little drop down menu. What this does is when you play some audio for it, on the site, you're presented with one frame from the video. It analyzes your profile. So you're saying, hey, I want to learn this profile like you, Hindenburg, learn this because I want to imitate this every time that I have I do my show or have my guests on or whatever. And then I save that. And uh, I just save it as like John's profile or whatever. And then I apply it on this track. OK, so it applies it on this track. You'd say, hey, put on John's profile and it'll just put it on the track and, every, you know, it makes it so that you don't have to mess with the EQ and compression every time. And you can be like consistent from show to show to show. All right. So uh, with all that, I hope that we probably should wrap this up and I can answer any questions that you do have. But that's the idea of how you do this stuff. The only other feature I didn't show is that another um, part of this is when you publish out into the world. Um, when you're done your podcast, you're going to export out a file. It's going to be an audio file, like an MP3. Um, and you could take that and put that on whatever your host is, like Libsyn or where, whoever it is. But with Hindenburg also, it, it has this publish feature, which you can just go right to the source. So it just saves you a step there as well. So that's the idea. So, um, But with all that, I think I'm going to stop and hopefully say hello to all you lovely people and um, see if anybody has any uh, questions that I can answer or, you know, things I can clear up to make your life easier for, you know, making your, making your shows. So Josephine, I'm going to ask you here, uh, are there any questions that I can help answer? And until she comes back on, I'm just going to show you the, uh, that publish feature. So this is what I mean by that. Here is this um, publishing feature here. So let's say I was ready to be done with my show. Um, I would just go to publish and you add, when you press this plus sign, you add the place where you want it to go. So let's say it's Libsyn and you're saying it's my show, number one, um, you know, whatever it is. And then you you put in your username and password and it'll just publish directly there to Libsyn if, you know, for your account. Um, and what this means is uh, pretty important too. So the, the like Spotify or Apple podcasts or whatever, they have a standard for how loud they want all their different show, all the shows to be. That's why they have these um, uh, standards. And what that means is just what you see this LUFS thing that comes up. It means that it has to be this amount of loud. So it's not really quiet and it's not really loud just so that when per, you know, you're the consumer, you're going from different shows. One of them isn't crazy loud and one's really quiet. So that's what they say. And then all that kind of metering um, can be tricky. And another thing that makes it very easy here is you just say, Hey, Hindenburg, make it this loud and that's it. And you just kind of put it out there. So it's another thing that um, that's a, actually a, a really big, uh, kind of a game changer, a little, little detail. All right. Uh, looks like we have a question, Jonathan. Okay. From Janine Wendy. What software am I using? The software I'm using is called Hindenburg. And it's, um, it's called Hindenburg is the company. And the one that I've been using is called Journalist Pro. And it's for making um, podcasts. And some of the features that I showed, there are two versions of it. There's journalist and then pro. Some of the features are only in the pro option. That's what I've been showing. Okay. Oh, we have another question. How does one access the software? So um, what you'd have to buy it. I mean, it's for sale. Uh, so you'd have to, you go to Hindenburg, um, Dot com. I can put the link in there if you in the chat uh, if you'd like, um, or or you could do that whatever. And you would bu you buy it basically, and then you you know they send you an email and you you install it with a a code uh, just like most you know softwares and stuff work. And then it's it's just on your computer and it's yours uh, to do that. And then I would, if you do All do right. that, I would definitely come to those trainings because they're free. 
And can I te- can we test the software before we buy it, or, or how does it work? Yes, uh, they have 30 day trials if you go to the website. So I would always recommend that. I do that for all kinds of software myself. I just do a trial, and then you just download it, the trial, and see what you think. You know, and again, even doing that with the those trainings, I would I would do that too, especially if you're just getting into it. Like, come to a training and try it. You download like examples. You 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 basically put to build a podcast. You kind of learn by doing it, and it's you know it's free. Yeah, you just do a trial, and you don't have to do it if you don't want it. All right, thanks. And um, I am curious for myself: Are the principles that you've taught in the in this course applicable to other uh, audio software, or um, you know, is it exclusively for Hindenburg? The principles are universal. Um, I think some of like the the unique features, like let's say that magic level thing or whatever, that's specific to Hindenburg. The principle of like how you organize things, um, that's kind of like universal. But the idea with Hindenburg mm-hmm. is it just makes it easier to do it. All right. Uh, we have another question. Uh, in the case of background voices, how do I cut them out without affecting the audio quality? Yeah. So let's say it's like you and I are having this chat and then we hear other people behind us. That would be that mm-hmm. magic levels feature that I, I showed in there. But what you would do is you would isolate the parts that are not the, the, the parts that are people in the background and you mm-hmm. you try to lower them or delete them depending on what it is. But if it's in the audio, let's say like you and I were having this chat and there's somebody right behind me and they're just going on. It's hard to hear me. That's where it gets, it does get tricky. You're getting into, um, there are like some of those plugins and stuff that can help with that. Um, that can get really complicated, but, uh, that's why you want to really get, you know, as much as just the person you're, you're, you're looking to get. Hey, um, I see you're wearing my, um, microphone and headset and I'm also wearing a microphone and headset. Is it, does it matter what kind of headphones you use? No, the headphones are really just so you can hear. I mean, it depends what you're doing, but like when you see a video, like a YouTube video, and then the people in the there, everyone's got headphones and they're speaking into the, the like one of these mics and stuff, right? They do that. You're just doing this so that you can hear yourself really. And so that mm-hmm. the idea is that since the microphone's recording, right? If let's say the sound was coming out of, um, so let's say there's three of us in a room and you know, uh, we all, all have microphones in front of us. Um, it's just so that I can hear everybody's voice in my head headset. So even if somebody was 10 feet away from me, they're in my ear, you know, and then I'm not hearing it come out of like my computer speaker. So the mic is picking up that sound. Does that make sense? So all this is doing is the same thing. It's just like, I'm hearing the stuff I need to hear here and the microphone's getting this, but I'm not, it's not like recording, um, like other audio. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, we have, uh, thanks for that. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. Uh, and then somebody's asking um, in this, in the, in the home chat, in our little back in the green room back here, um, is this how deep fake conversations are made? Question mark. Just curious. Deep fake. Yeah. Um, you know, I could probably get in there and take like, if I recorded your audio, right. And I could take little clips of your words and I could patch them all together and make you say something different. So yes, deep fake mm. audio is kind of just done like how well you do the editing. Yeah. Video, I have no idea. That's like magic. That's like amazing. But <laughs> audio is just like taking little clips of words and you can splice them all together really easily. And yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do we have any more questions? You can add your question. We have a couple of more minutes. You can add your question in the chat. Um, like um, Jonathan had said, you can go to hindenburg.com. We've added uh, the link in the comment section and you can learn more about the Hindenburg uh, digital audio workstation software. And try it out for yourself uh, if you get a chance to. Um, and for all the podcasters who are part of this this event today, you um, you can you know we can all go and try it out for thirty days. So uh, definitely check it out. Uh, remember that uh, Jonathan had also mentioned that 
if you use Facebook, there is a Facebook group for Hindenburg community and you'll find other people who are also working with the software itself. So I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, Jonathan, I don't know if you want to add anything else on top. The only thing I want to add is just thank you very much for having me. And I, I hope that you got something out of it, um, you know, and, and, and can make your, your shows. Thank you so much. And uh, good morning to you. And I uh, hope that we get to see you again very soon. All right. Thank you so much. I'll all see right. you, but everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you. That was really a great deep dive, don't you think, Melissa? It really was. It really was. It's it's always like the first time in terms of how interesting it is and how you always learn something new. Um, and of mm. course, Jonathan is a really good and engaging trainer, so the sessions are always a lot of fun with Hindenburg. Yes, for sure. Well, it looks like it's our time to hand over the mic. Who oh, is coming yes. on next? <laughs> we would love to reintroduce our lovely hosts, uh, Belia and Adele, who are podcasters and also amazing, amazing, amazing entrepreneurs and, and artists and oh, they're just amazing humans from Lusaka, Zambia joining the stream from Lusaka, Zambia, who are going to be carrying through the rest of the program. Belia and Adele are co-founders of Yellow Ray Digital, and I will let them make the introduction um, and tell their story themselves. Speak in your own voice. Welcome, Belia and Yes. Adele. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, away. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. We really, really, really love working with um, Mel and Joe from Africa Podfest. And of course, when they asked us to be a part of this journey, we were like, what do you mean? We're coming. We're doing what we need to do. We're coming and we're doing exactly what you need from us. So yeah, my name is Belia and I am one half of Yellow Ray Digital. My name is Adele and I'm, I'm, I am the second half of Yellow Ray Digital. And as Belia has already said, we are super, super excited, interesting in all of the work that uh, Africa Podcast is doing. Yeah. And we hope that you guys are enjoying it as well. Exactly. So let's make sure we keep the chat section interactive. Yes. Let's ask questions. We have the podcast yes. that's coming on in just a second. Yes. So let's keep yes. it exciting and exactly. interactive. Yes. And of course, today we're in Kenya. We're interacting with the lovely ladies, the lovely podcasters from Kenya, Sima Box. They are just amazing. So before we get into it, we just want to give you guys a little bit of some background of who Sima Box is and what they are doing over there. So obviously Simabox is a podcaster incubator that has the Daba incubator currently and they focus specifically on female podcasters, female voices, female stories. And it's just beautiful as Ado and I are obviously a female run agency here yeah. on the digital WhatsApp. <laughs> so plug, um, we love anything female led. So I'm going to give you guys a brief intro into who Simabox is and who currently run Simabox, which is Doris, right? So Simabox is run by Doris Onyango, she is the creative associate at Simabox and project manager for the Daba Podcast Incubator. So the Simabox specifically, um, the, the Dada Podcast Incubator specifically focuses on female voices, like I said, and Doris is just a champion for female voices. She believes that women should be afforded the space to showcase their fullest expressions of themselves and position themselves as chief storytellers, as well as what they have been experiencing in their own lives and their own actions. She is a five foot two ball of energy and love and she just enjoys chocolate wine and she also enjoys enabling women to just find their voice in the podcasting space as well as being amazing media content. <laughs> you know what it is with the network in Africa you just need to give us some grace just a little bit of grace <laughs> but it's okay you know it's all right we are here we're doing what we need to do and what matters is that we are back online that's what matters that's what matters yes 
<laughs> so guys, I'm yes. sure you can tell Billy and I are super excited mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. today it feels like we're Wow. Wow. The network is really fighting it's with us. It's fighting us today. But we're going to make another plan because we don't need any of these network problems. But obviously, Adele was mentioning before that we are in the women's space, mm-hmm. as you were saying. Yes. Continue. So we're super mm-hmm. excited to be interacting with all of these women. Today, we yeah. have so many questions and we're going to hear from everybody as well. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be joining us in just in a minute. Yeah. And we just want to obviously extract as much as we can from them about their experiences, about what whatever questions we have. So if you have any questions as well, please feel free to drop them in the chat section. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So obviously the first session, what we're going to do with um, these amazing Kenyan podcasters is we're going to allow each of them to introduce themselves, what their podcast is about and why it matters in their space. Mm-hmm. And then obviously we want to make sure that they're each feeling highlighted and celebrated and showcased and just given the platform that they deserve to just speak on what their podcasts are about. Mm -hmm. And then from there, once they're speaking and doing what they need to do, you need to be making your comments and your, your questions known on the YouTube chats. We need to see those questions and also let us know where you're watching from. Are you watching from Kenya? Are you watching from Zambia? Are you watching from Germany? Where are you? We want to know. Drop it in the chat. We would love to know where you're watching from. And to take it, I'm, I was going to say without further ado, <laughs> I don't know whether that's a nice sentence for this. Session. Maybe. Yeah. Without further ado, I think I would like for us to introduce, um, to allow Doris to come on the stage now and to do what she needs to do. Doris from Sima Box. Welcome, 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 Energy is so much in here. Oh my gosh. We know, we know, we know what you do. Nice, nice to meet you virtually, Doris. We're so happy you could join us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you for... Thank you for putting a spotlight on Kenyan podcasters. Thank you for putting a spotlight on the Dada Podcast Incubator. It's wonderful. We are really excited. Amazing, amazing. So for anyone that doesn't know anything about the Dada podcast, maybe you could give us a brief introduction to what you guys are doing over there, what the vision Mm -hmm. is that you guys carry and how you're amplifying female voices in your space currently. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me just give a little bit uh, of background about um, Semabox. Semabox is a podcast incubator. And generally, our main aim is to create as many podcasts in Kenya and in Africa as well. Um, we want to build, create, nurture the, the, the industry or the habit of podcasting. Um, yeah. And that's especially for um, now as I pivot into the Data Podcast Incubator, we realize, at least our, our CEO realized, CEO and founder is called Dana Seda, he realized um, that women, women voices and um, LGBTQIA voices are very much underrepresented in Africa. Um, right. And that is basically, a, you know, a patriarchal thing. So if you put... Mm-hmm. Uh, 10 men and 10 women in a room and say, okay, everybody start a podcast. You'll find mm. it's like, you know, like five or four women who will say, I'm actually confident enough to start a podcast and maybe even two who will now say, uh, who will follow through with the idea. So mm. we said, let's start a podcast incubator specifically for women, specifically for African women um, mm. so that they can tell their stories. Um, yeah. I know, you know, a lot of the stories that are out there about Africa and African women are very Eurocentric, very from mm-hmm. our very white days, and they don't yeah. get our stories right because they haven't yeah. lived our experiences at exactly. all. They don't know yeah. what we go through every day. And exactly. also the thing that we want to demystify is that we do not have agency. It, it's, mm-hmm. We do not, like the, 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 the myth that is, 
out there basically about African women is we just need to be saved. We don't. Some do, but majority of us do not need to be saved. We are capable. We are thought leaders. Um, we have opinions that matter and they need to be put out there um, into the world. So the Data Podcast Incubator is not just, uh, as much as it is focused on women, the topics or the podcasters, um, their range of expertise is vast. There is uh, one of our podcasters who's um, called Kathy. She does politics, women in politics, and she's interviewed women in politics, um, women in politics in Kenya and from very different regions. Um, there is a hundred on books, and uh, Nyambura Mutani just reads, um, is doing a podcast specifically on books and on authors, and she tries as much as possible to foc focus on black authors and African authors. Um, we have Zeda Talks, who um, is focused on women in business, you know, con creating conversation. Um, mm. there's, there's a myth that women and young women do not have, like they don't have anything substantial to offer. Mm. And that's the thing that we want to demystify. Mm. And we want a program that is done, is for us and is done by us. Mm -hmm. All the content created is by those those wonderful ladies, those eight wonderful mm -hmm. ladies. Um, the production is done in Nairobi. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we are creating a little community of podcasters um, in Nairobi, and we are encouraging more and more women to continue with podcasting. Yeah. I love that. That is so amazing. I feel like everything about yeah. this is just inspirational. So I have another quick question. Mm -hmm. Do you feel mm -hmm. like there's been a shift? Because obviously you have these ladies that are already engaging with you. They are part mm -hmm. of your community. They're doing the most. But have you seen a shift in just interest in general mm -hmm. um, among other women um, that are maybe considering doing podcasting? Mm -hmm. how, how, is that, how is that going? Yes, definitely. At first... Most uh, most of the podcasters who used to be here were men, right? Who used mm -hmm. to be just in Nairobi. Some of the biggest podcasts in 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 Kenya are are male led, but mm -hmm. because of of the the push that we are, we we really are trying to push and say, yeah. come on, ladies, let's hear your voices. It's not like you don't have anything to say. You do have something yeah. to say. Why don't exactly. we hear it? And, exactly. and we need to push, you know, sometimes it's, it's a good and a bad thing because mm -hmm. for women, we just put our head down and work. We don't need the many accolades, but we yes. want to amplify your voices. Mm -hmm. We really do want to amplify your voices. What are, mm -hmm. are you talking about youth and politics? Are you talking about social responsibility? Are you interested, interested in interviewing um, prolific Africans who, who are fearless in their fields? Are you interested in talking about theater? Bring your expertise. Let mm -hmm. us put it out there into the world and let us enjoy it. Because we, the worst thing that can happen for us is for you to go with your knowledge and mm -hmm. to die with your knowledge and to die mm -hmm. with, with, without us having heard what you have to say or having what you think, what having had what we want to hear what you think so don't mm -hmm. leave this earth without putting a little bit of you implanting in a little bit of you in our minds yeah wow <laughs> wow maybe that question yes there's a question here from jenny she's asking is it only in nairobi um the first one is uh, yeah, because um, we were constricted uh, because of COVID, obviously. Oh, yes. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first uh, cohort was only in Nairobi, but I feel, I see that in the future, we will expand to different cities. Yeah. So keep Zambia. it... Zambia. Zambia. <laughs> Zambia, 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 Zambia. We are very biased, obviously. We are waiting for you. Yeah. Europe. We got it. We're ready. <laughs> okay. Amazing. 
No, that was beautiful. And I think any aspiring mm. podcaster or anyone that's looking to even get into the podcasting space should really listen to what you're saying. Outside of you only being available for Nairobi and Kenyan mm. podcasters, what you've said is really what needs to yeah. matter the most. As a female podcaster, mm. it's important for me to know that my voice matters mm -hmm. and my small podcast that I've been recording for the past six months is really important right. and it's valid, it right? Does. It matters. It matters. My story it matters. Is important. Your story out there with your small podcast, whatever number Absolutely. of you have, it matters. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, awesome. absolutely. And yeah. uh, what I'd like to say, what I'd like mm -hmm. to say is um, please, Support, watch the videos for the for the Dada Podcast Incubator, watch right. their channels. They are on mm -hmm. Anchor, they are on YouTube, they are on mm -hmm. Spotify and a number of um, uh, podcasting platforms. Follow them on their social media. You'll, they'll be plugged there, I think. So just, mm -hmm. I think, listen to them, um, share the podcast, you know, let's hear mm -hmm. Let let them see. You know that click subscribe means a lot. <laughs> yes, that click subscribe yeah, no, means friends. a lot. Yeah, yeah. it does. It yeah. does. That yeah. one listen. Like if I if if I know I know one of the podcasters here. If she sees she's getting listenership from Zambia, she'll flip. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. yeah. That was actually, the next question. Mm -hmm. So somebody was asking, how can everybody watching support the Dada Podcast Incubator? So yeah. you've already heard. Go find these people, like, share, subscribe, do what you need to do. Is there any way, any way else mm -hmm. we can support you guys as an incubator? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can, I think we can plug, uh, they can plug their own uh, PayPal's and m -pesas and uh, however money, else you can support. Money, money, is, money, money is a great, <laughs> money is a great motivator i mean <laughs> yeah so they'll plug the ladies who are here they should plug um where they can where checks and cash and all uh, virtual monies can be sent to nice got it no we understand <laughs> we, hear we hear you <laughs> amazing now that we're talking about the, the lovely ladies the lovely podcasters I think we have some videos that we're going to play for them. Are we going to do the videos first? Then after we do the videos, we're going to introduce them and allow them to come and join us on this amazing live, you know, vibes. Exactly. But for now, there's some videos for you guys to watch that you can see what the Kenyan podcasters are about. And yeah, from there, we're going to let them come through and join us on the live. So we're going to jump into watching some of their videos. And um, if you guys want to ask any questions as we watch the videos, chats. make sure you're dropping your chats in the chat section on YouTube right here, right now. We want to see all of the things that you guys want to know about podcasting with Simabox in general podcasting. If you have any general podcasting questions, we are here to help you out. So make sure you're dropping your questions. And for now, we're going to jump into those videos. Thank you, Doris. Right. Thank you, Doris. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much, Doris. My name is Joy Mala. And I am Gloria Mashinti. And we are the hosts of the Kisima podcast. The youth in Kenya are a disenfranchised lot because we have been pushed to the periphery of decision making. Often than not, the policies and structures that are designed for the youth are taken over by people who do not care for youth or our interests. As soon as we clock 18 years of age, we are told that we are able to take part in all the activities as Kenyan adults, but this is never the case. The situation is such that youth are meant to be seen more than to be heard. The Kisima podcast is a space that will consolidate conversations around public interest litigation, civic action, social commentary, and current issues. We'll also touch on our rights and responsibilities as Kenyan youth. Because a lot of times you're told you have all these rights, but then what are your responsibilities as a Kenyan youth? This is especially a pivotal point in our history and in Kenya because we are heading towards the 2022 general elections. And we very well know how the politicians usually use youth to foster their selfish agendas. But this time around, 
we are going to take action from a point of knowledge and from a point of clarity. And we will let them know that we are not the leaders of tomorrow, but the leaders of today. Do join us for this and more bold and informative conversations. Thank On the you. Kisima podcast. Karibuni. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> So yeah, that's one of our podcasters, Kisima Podcast. Her name is Joy. She's going to be a part of the panel discussion today. And what do you believe Joy and um, her partner, Doria, what do you believe they bring to the table in terms of their podcast? And what, what kind of growth have you seen in them through your incubator? Oh, wow. Um, Joy and Gloria, you know, because they're young people, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we're all young at heart, but they're... Yes. <laughs> But they're young people and they're also interested in politics, all right? Mm -hmm. They're interested in social responsibility. Mm -hmm. Those are not things you normally, at least in our kind of context, you don't normally see uh, young people interested in and you don't see women interested in those things. Mm -hmm. But they're driving those conversations. Yeah. And, and, and they do have a little bit of social commentary in between. Um, talking about the impact of social media on our lives, but they talk about, you know, taxes and um, how policies influence lives, you know, and they go really do go in depth. At first, when they began the podcast, they were a little bit shy, but now you can actually see, like, you know, I actually do know what I'm talking about, and we need answers from our fellow youth, you know, uh, and we are, we're putting our fellow youth to task. And the people who are older, who have been on their podcast, they really do ask some hard-hitting questions. And they want to know, um, what is it that you have done, you know, to change things in society? Or what are you doing? Because the current situation that we are in right now was not created by us, was by them. But we are the ones wow. who have to live in that kind of, we are the ones who have to live in, in the present and with the consequences of those decisions that were made then. Amazing, amazing, mm. amazing, amazing, amazing. That's beautiful. Thank you, Doris, that was yeah. amazing. And then we have another video from another podcaster that we're gonna share, and we're gonna allow that to play now before we give our commentary and you guys can watch. Once again, make sure that you guys are dropping your questions in the chat for Doris or ourselves so we can answer and interact with you. Let us know where you're watching from, where you're tuning in from, and let's get into the next video of the next podcast. Awesome. Thanks, Doris. You are awesome and so educated. Mm. Thank you, Hi, Doris. Thank you, Doris. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we're happy to be here. So I wanted to start a podcast mainly to highlight um, the issues that we, we experience as individuals or as a society, which are very, um, basically, I don't know if it's stigmatized, I don't know if stigmatized is the word, but very serious, deep conversations that people are not open to talk about or they are fearful or they, there's a lot of shame tied to these things that people experience. And I felt inclined to talk about them being that I have personally gone through them, uh, case in point like GBV, um, gender-based violence, like uh, abuse of many sorts. And it, because I didn't want it to be very personal and talk about my story and talk about my own life because we know how these things go when you're doing them online and you don't want to distract people, I felt like I needed a soundboard and someone who can bring in like like another angle to it where we can, it can be more informative, like in regards to these specific conversations. So the, um, my friend Wesh is also passionate about that, but now she was bringing in the angle of, it's not, it's not personal, like it's not, it's, we are not talking about ourselves. It's a conversation that we want many people to have so mm -hmm. that they can figure out what is eating them up, what is eating us up as, this, as a society. Like, the things that people are going through at home and the things people have gone through like in the past directly affect um, 
adult relationships, adult relationships yeah. adults like engagements even at work and yeah. like how basically just how you function as an adult there's things you need to think about it's there's things you need to address there's you need to get to the root cause of the issues that you're going through as a person so basically we promote um self awareness and just questioning yourself and we talk about these conversations that are a bit um tied to shame so that we can normalize them and make people feel comfortable enough to talk about them and to address them and then yeah yeah and um for me personally it's about wellness mm-hmm. mental and and emotional wellness because a lot of wellness as it is marketed to us today is very white and very classic classed yeah classed and it's not accessible to everybody and we wanted to create a platform where people can um find tools we can give tools to for how to cope or how to maneuver especially now with the pandemic and with figuring out like maybe you don't have a job or suddenly you have all this time to think and all the thoughts you've been holding back all the things you've been avoiding now are there and in your face yeah. and now you have to deal with it yeah. and like part of self actualization is a lot of self reflection it's a lot of learning how to be present and how to like where you are you're not thinking about oh I'm, what am i going to do two hours from now you're thinking about i mean this thing i can fully experience and enjoy it and that's the that's part of like why this is very important to me and why it's important for us even as we now figure out how to raise our children as we figure out how to have better relationships with each other better friendships you know we are getting to a point where it's important for all of us to be heard yeah. and to be loved in a correct way yeah and sometimes um your past your past relationships or your home life has shown you how what love is that's what you think it is but without knowledge and without seeing another type of way that people have relationships it becomes difficult to recognize when you're in a good one and when you're ba- in a bad one yeah. when there are red flags and when there are someone might not necessarily do a horrible thing to you but they might say something that can be triggering and you don't even know why that is triggering yeah and so we want to promote that kind of those kinds of conversations yeah. that kind of self reflection yeah so we are i am silvia wanjira and i am shiro averu yeah and we are the hosts of the bts podcast beneath, beneath the, the surface, surface. Mm-hmm. and you can find us on instagram and on anchor and spotify and all the platforms major platforms, major platforms. you can also find us on wordpress we yeah. have a, a blog and that's where our show notes are yeah and um yeah, yeah just let's keep the conversation going amazing amazing yeah. I, love guys. i love the mix of podcasters you ladies have over there it's a topic <laughs> so it's just making so much sense because everything is so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. it's current it's It's just it. It's just it. great. Thank you so much. Comment you on that as well. What growth have you seen with their podcast and where Wow. I, you know, they 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 are a fantastic podcast and for me I, I think I'll just talk about qualitatively about their podcast. Mental health and the kind of thing that they're talking about, mental health, gender-based violence, navigating adult relationships. Those were not mm-hmm. things that we had words for. you know mm-hmm. when people didn't talk about depression people did not talk about you know relationships in such a deep and in-depth manner and mm-hmm. the way they have been able to articulate the issues that we are facing now you know you know talking about how you should be loved and the things that mm-hmm. affect um your your mental wellness on a day to day basis those are very important conversations to have yeah. and mm-hmm. and even more important uh, belia and adel uh, for a very long time um mental health issues were not considered african issues at all Do you know they were not considered african oh issues at all yes that's not for us it's for the west What do you, you know mean? you know I know mm-hmm. like oh my gosh mm-hmm. what do you mean mm-hmm. so that they have found a way to break down those things to break down the right. issues that we are facing currently right. in such a very 
uh, easily understandable manner and a very relatable manner as well. It's, you, you, you feel you feel like you're in therapy without actually being in therapy. You know, some of the yeah. things that they talk about is like, actually, that's why I'm actually going through that. So, you know, it really explains. And I, and I love their podcast because of that. Yeah. That's awesome. Love. Yeah. Thank you so much, Doris. That's beautiful. And we love the fact that you support each of these podcasters yeah. with your whole chest and your whole experience. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. do, I do. I <laughs> do. Yeah. yeah awesome so we have one more video that we're going to be watching and giving commentary on from one of your kenyan podcasters and we're going to get into it yes let's go let's go thanks doris yeah we're excited too <laughs> Thank you, Doris. Um, my name is Wanjiru Nguhe, and I'm the host and creator of the podcast, Mine is a Comment. Now, you should watch and listen to Mine is a Comment because whenever women are talking about underrepresentation, we're not just talking about underrepresentation because we want to appear in pictures when government people are doing photo ops and when they're commissioning things and when they're... No, no, no. It is because when people are making decisions in the absence of other people, it means that the people who are missing out get to leave this under representation. And many times you navigate with the gaps left because you were not in the room when decisions were being made. Take the pandemic, for example, when the president announced that we were going to have a curfew and the president said, we are fighting this thing, this thing is a war and we are all guns blazing. Fine, fantastic. So we have a curfew and we have all these things. But what about the women who were pregnant during this curfew, what happens to them? What happens to protocols in the case of an emergency? What happens to, what do you do when your baby is sick at night? What do you do when you're pregnant and you need to deliver now, now? Were the protocols clear? Were they simple and were they easy to follow? It is things like this that we're going to talk about in the podcast, and this is why you should listen, because the politics is not just what happens in the room, but also what happens to our lives when we're not in the room, because the politics is in our stories, and it is these stories that we're going to tell. Please follow me on my Twitter at I am Wanjiro. On Facebook, it's Wanjiro Nguhe, and on Instagram at Wanjiro Nguhe. Yes. Mm. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Powerful. She said, I am here and I need you to know. I had goosebumps. They, oh, so, you know? Small, small, small. <laughs> Please, guys. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Obviously, Doris, right. would love to hear your commentary on her growth, her mm -hmm. podcast growth, growth, all of that good stuff. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, so there's a thing that if you listen to a lot of, uh, if in many Kenyan conferences, you will, and, and um, the point of, the, where we're the point of asking questions, someone will always shoot up at the back and say, actually, mine is not a question, it's just a comment. And it's always <laughs> men who say that. <laughs> You know, and it's always a man who says that. I'm like, man, we're asking questions. So how she has comments and she wants to talk about um, her thoughts and opinions. And um, Wanjiro, from the point where she comes at, is um, policies affect our lives directly, mm. very directly, and at a very mm. personal level. So you'll mm. find our leaders saying, like in Kenya, there was a curfew during Corona. Um, right. There's no movement no movement after 7 p.m. So you can imagine if you were pregnant during that time mm -hmm. and the baby is coming. You can't tell the baby, actually, there's curfew. You can't come, you know. <laughs> it's there's impossible. a curfew. You need to come after the curfew is open. Right? Right? The you morning. know, like 7 to 4. It, 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 is, it is impossible. So she has conversations with women on how these policies affect our lives directly. And, so, and it's government policies medical policies um not po not policies per se but how does the church impact our lives as well how like, her latest podcast was about purity culture and how that really messed up the lives of some people um in in christianity itself because mm -hmm. there are the, some things some things some of these preachers preach uh, like you uh, mm, you know, <laughs> we know, we know. <laughs> you know, like you look at it and you you really have to think twice or thrice. So mm. her comments are vast and they range from um, when a crisis in the world has happened, such as Corona, um, mm. the world 
or African, uh, the healthcare sector forgot about HIV, mm. you know, forgot about TV, forgot about all these other things. Mm. So um, the growth I've seen in her is she has, she was really timid when she came in, but now she's really bold and she's shooting a shot wow. in people's, not even in DMs directly like hey i want you to be on my podcast do you want to come yeah. on my podcast Lovely, and yeah. by the way, what's the worst you can say no <laughs> yeah exactly you won't, most, die. You won't die. die literally and you won't die and the answer for more often than not for her shooting a shot has been yes so some wow. of the people she's met uh she's interviewed a podcast i think it's only one person she knew personally the rest she just she decided to shoot her shot that's wow. amazing, wow. especially wow. for yeah. intimate person. Exactly. That means her show is just yeah, yeah. Love it. It's Love absolutely, it. she's broken out of it completely. Yeah. Ah, that's beautiful. I think yeah. you support these women so well, Doris, and it's so beautiful to hear how you know each of their podcasts so integrally yeah. and so personally mm -hmm. as well. It's very, very, very beautiful to see. So their growth has really been um, something that we are now appreciating based off of what you guys carry yeah. in Simmerbox mm -hmm. and the fact that you've actually enabled them to feel the confidence that they need to just shoot their shot in people's DMs, yeah. to ask them to be guests, to yeah. come up with fun yeah. topics, and also to just speak on their truths with yeah. like wholeness yeah. and authenticity. So congratulations yeah. Yeah. to you. I love that lovely so yeah. an amazing project. Honestly, just amazing. Very interesting. There, there, there's so many pod I think I should highlight the Zeda Talks. Who mm. talks to women in business? Oh my goodness, yeah. Mwende is fantastic. She talks, and you know the business uh, industry in in Africa. Do you know we have perfume makers in Kenya? I did not know until they came into our studio. Yes, honey. Wow. So we need to come to Kenya. <laughs> That's what she's saying. <laughs> you need us to be in Kenya. Just say come to Kenya. We are there. Oh we my God. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. I mean, perfect perfume makers and the scents are lovely. So when they talk about um, how the journey, oh, she talks to those women about their journey in business and how they have uh, demystified um, the concept that actually women can, one, women can create scents and African women can create scents mm -hmm. and the challenges and the lows and highs. We have one more podcast. Uh, I think our we, we call them our babies, called Wakilisha Podcast, and mm -hmm. they talk about um, they talk about children in conflict with the law. Did you know that that um, they're actually children who are in conflict in the law, and it's all over Africa, by the way. So wow. we 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 if you grow up in like um, I'd say I've grown up in some sort of privilege. I never encountered that but the children who are committing yeah. crimes True. being arrested yeah. and being uh, taken through the whole court process and taken wow. to jail and that whole process of rehabilitation so mm. um it, the point is that the women who are here that are leading the stories are Fantastic. And they are actually top podcasts. Like Wakilisha podcast was is a top podcast in the world on wow, juvenile wow. juvenile okay. justice. In the wow. when we got Man. that notification, I sat down. I was like, is this Nairobi? <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> we are yeah. producing top 10 podcasts in juvenile, you know. I mean, so it's really important. It's really important to give these women, young women, or whatever age the agency to come mm -hmm. out and speak. Like, this is my experience yeah. as a lawyer. I'm seeing children in conflict with the law and they yeah. don't, and the general public does not know about children who are in conflict with the law. No, yeah, mm -hmm. we really don't. Like, we all assume that all children are in their homes with their parents, mm -hmm. but there's actually kids yeah, out yeah. there. Just, and yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. And, so how are you inspired, guys? I'm so inspired. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. There's so many, and I can speak for hours and hours about them, but I know a couple of them are here. Yes. <laughs> they should speak for themselves. <laughs> yes. yes. You don't worry. Yeah. But just put a pin in that note, Doris. We'll come back to you. For now, we're going to give okay. you some time to go drink some tea, you know, go clear, clear your throat, your throat <laughs> just relax a little bit, open a window, do what you need to do there by a box. 
whatever you need to do, sis, do what you need to do. And we're going to rush into or slide into our next session, our musical <laughs> interlude and poet session. So Doris, you can, you know, go do your thing. We'll see you later, we'll sis. We'll see you in a second. We'll see you in a second. You can, you know, <laughs> go do your thing. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Guys, personally, I'm mm. inspired. I'm hyped. I'm just energetic. I just feel like right now we need to take a bit of a break. Oof, you we know? just need to, you know, take as Doris is going to take a break. Hey, also us. Let us all just breathe. Yeah. So with this break comes mm -hmm. two artists. <laughs> or should we say three artists? Right? Okay. Yeah. So we're basically going to have a poetry interlude and a musical interlude which i am very excited about as well yeah. because we've heard nothing but good reviews so right. i'm going to introduce the poet mm -hmm. and i hope you guys are excited as we are because as you can see we're excited anyway exactly. okay so um our poet's name is jerry and we are excited to have her so this is she's an acclaimed kenyan poet writer communication specialist who has worked and is, is is interested in tech mm -hmm. so already that's like so many things like look at the people we have today. just diverse so you know, diverse what you need <laughs> tech what you need we got you it's yes. amazing so she is interested in tech as i already yeah. said history culture media yeah. society of africa all of these great things so she has actually got a 15 year blogging and podcasting experience and she is basically a veteran in this game as we've already heard like sis has been around she is doing the thing so she's actually the voice behind the respective kenyanpoet.com let us all check it out because obviously sis is doing great things so jerry is passionate about storytelling and the power of new media to amplify voices to shape narratives and challenge conventional wisdom especially about her continent so guys Look at you, girl. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> I'm inspired just, just saying that. Wow. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Belia and Odell. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Great host. You guys have so much awesome energy. This is just infectious. And, and no, I love we got it. You. <laughs> Thank you so and much. We're ready to be blessed by your poeticness. We are here for you, and the floor is yours. Do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm really happy to be here. As I've mentioned, I'm really grateful to um Josephine, Melissa, and the whole team that is behind this event for inviting me to be part of this discovery tour of the Kenyan podcasting space. And here's why. In June this year, I relaunched my podcast, the Kenyan Poets Podcast, after a nine-year break. Um, so I haven't been in the space for 15, uh, for 15 years, but yes, I sort of um, started a bit earlier. But, and, and since then, 2011 to now, a lot has changed in the podcasting space. And there is, this is where we are now telling our stories. This is where we are raising our voices and we're also talking about those things that really matter to us. So in line with this uh, month's theme or the Africa pod, podcast, um, podfest rather, whose focus is on advocacy, creating awareness and movement, uh, building around issues affecting women and girls, I will be performing a set of three poems, two of which are from my book, um, Minds and Minefields, I hope you can see it, my spoken words, uh, which I published in uh, 2010. So the first poem is called When Change Comes. When villages grow into towns, towns into cities, shops into malls, spaces into estates, when streets turn into avenues, avenues into highways, superhighways and subways, then things change. Villages become old, frail women deserted by their offspring, all gone to the cities with big lights who, unlike prodigal sons, only return in coffins. Homestead empty like the stare of a nine-year-old, eyes stiffened by industrial blue liquid, face barren of emotion. City streets give birth to illegitimate children, street children who, at the age of six, hang around city corners begging for a shilling. At the age of 16, you beg them not to harm you as they rob from you in these big city streets and big mall corners, subways and highways. 
estates and villas, suburbs and urban spaces, metropolitan cities and industrial areas become fathers who saw wild oats to slum ghettos, poverty stricken valleys. In these valleys, girls quickly mature into women's hiring children at the age of 16, maybe even 13, where single families spring quicker than a spring chicken, where lands mushroom to shanties with no jobs in mind, in the mind or offices. When kids can go to school, only to sit in the sun, counting cars, watching others live their dreams while theirs have been packed away like the textbooks in their bags, then innocence changes. When husbands neglect wives for brewing dance, choosing illicit drinks over tuition fees, when mothers are jobless, fathers are drunkards, when all one can show for years of sacrifice in school is a piece of paper, a college degree, while unqualified minds run companies and governments, then minds change. When opportunity looks at the color of your skin, Asking you who you know with lots of muscles, politically, economically, spiritually. When your surname, skin tone determines which doors remain shut, how fast handbags are clutched, who calls you up for a job, what neighborhoods you can take a stroll in, then thoughts change. That was the poem, When Change Comes. Um, so if you'd like to do either finger snapping or nod your head or anything of, of the sort, there are some, uh, you can use some of the emoticons, I think, on your chart. Um, so the second poem, so this is um, a poem that uh, is written, uh, I wrote it in a mix of Sheng and Kiswahili, and it uses the style of personification. So for those of us, um, uh, Adele and... Uh, and um, uh, Sorry, just give me a minute, I get to it. So Adele and Belia, I know this might make me sort of just uh, fly over above you, but I'd just like to talk about this piece shortly. Um, so this, um, uh, I use the style of personification to highlight the plight of hawkers or street vendors that they, they struggle to survive in this Nairobi. So it's called My Share Hawker, basically the life of a hawker. So, Hamsini, fifth day, fifth day, Hamsini, Yadioni, Hamsini, tops, fifth day, Mali, Yadioni, fifth day, fifth day, Mave, Auntie, Sister, Ben, Yadioni, Nekwaya, Kwaya, Kira Kitu, ni Hamsini, Vitu, ni a camera, Guo, ni a waga, Bado, in a nuka, Makota, Yadere, Kai Karaja, Shukua, Mari, Haraka, Joao, Kajo, na Mikebeo, ya Miguine. Dakika na nusu ni kwa kwashashoro. Gunia kwa mgongo mtoto kwa matiki. Kwa meda. Ten bob hashu. Hashu ten bob. Maembe ten bob. Uu mwadhan gai tena jiyo hao. Giza ya moshi. Saa sita mchana utadhani ni alkaida wa merudi Nairobi. Mugu saidia mimi. Kato ni na mare ni meshikiria biyo kama swara. Si mambarara, gawazi ya kijani kafunguliwa. Ah, makarao ataki tukure. Wanatupa tia gas ni kama wanalipwa na ire mshahara yao ya giri tatu. Wanaliga na buduki. Kwa ni hawajui niko na ekei, nirisasi natafuta diyo kama uwe defegi na yo. Huku maisha ni survival. Nimeria hadi macho ya kazoea. Nimebebo na kajo. Kasionagi haji ya kulipa rent kwa gu, wewe. Unakanyaga matuda kwani nakura kwako. Unafikiri sisi, siyo watu kama wewe? Hmm? Kwani, yako tudio kazi. Muna jifanya hapa, na tai, na suti, hati kukasirika, hati tu, tumemarisa farada. Kwani tunaikura? Nairofi ni ya kila mtu. Maraya, na fadita, mama boga, na shokora. Mwisi na musugu, hata mimi nimetua tax. Hii mcheso ya paka na panya. Aishi rewa makesho kwa sababu kama mimi, karao na kajo, kazi mawakule. Hata wakubwa, <laughs> si wanakura mahidi na wanafuji wa mafuta. <laughs> na hiyo, si maedereo. So that was a poem, uh, Maisha Hoka. And... Um, 
I'm on to my last poem. And this is um, a dedication to all the amazing women out there who are getting to the podcasting space and any other spaces and being themselves and breaking the glass ceiling. So the poem is called, Go On, Be Great, Be You. So when they look at you, what do they think? That you shouldn't be here? That your kind shouldn't have a career? Or maybe they just sneer. When they hear you, do they whisper? That you're too loud, that you're too proud? Or maybe not easily bowed? When they touch you, what do they feel? that your melanin is too blinding, that all you're good for is a ring, or maybe they see that you're not the kind that is easy to ignore, that your voice is not the kind that is easily cowed, that your voice is not the kind that you can shroud, that you are the kind destined for greatness. So go on, be great be you. Asante sana. Um, so Abdel and uh, Belia, over to you. Thank you so much. Well, you did, well, well done. done. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Like, loved it. Wow. Absolutely loved it. I wish I, I could know. have understood the second one more because it just sounded so deep. I was like, listen to all of this. <laughs> You know, vernacular language, Kenyan words. Yes, lovely. Yes, lovely. Amazing. Well done. We are here for it. We love it. And thank you so much for your time. Have a beautiful afternoon. Thank you for blessing us with your excellence this afternoon. Awesome. It's been great hanging out with you. So, um, and to our viewers, um, enjoy the rest of the show. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Lovely. Oh, guys, today is the day. I'm just going to sit here in inspiration. Literally, period. Find me knee deep in inspiration. I'm not even ready for the next one. Are you ready for the next one? Let's, Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Mm. Awesome. So next up, we have some musical soothing from Njoki Karu and Newman Oman. So Newman, Njoki is a performer, right? A board certified music therapist at the Nenyo Initiative. Don't mind my pronunciation, okay? The point is this person is amazing. She's amazing, <laughs> okay? <next> time. <laughs> exactly. A songwriter of permanent distinction, and she has been recognized in the music, the Kenyan music industry. Her work has been featured in different films like Rafiki, Country Queen, and This Is Life. Mm -hmm. Together with Newman Aura, of high repute who is who also dabbles in composing and arranging she released a project titled Twasifu Yamoyo in August 2020 that is available on all streaming platforms right so we have Njoki Karu here today with us with her guitarists and they're here to bless us with their amazing musical vibes ladies and gentlemen show them some love in the comment section make sure that you're ready to Put your stars emojis, your clapping emojis, all of that good vibe. Yes! Hello! Hello. <laughs> Hi! Hi! We're so excited for this. Yes. The camera is like set right. Oh. <laughs> us too, us too, like us too. <laughs> Thank you for having oh. us. You. you can now breathe, okay? Amazing. So this is new. Yes. Thank you so much for um, giving us your time. Are you guys ready to do what you need to do best? Always ready. Always Great. Ready. So take so, it away. Let's not take your spotlight. <laughs> do the same. Cool, cool, cool. So hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for having us. Uh, we are thrilled to be part of such an amazing initiative. It is um it's needed. It's definitely needed to amplify women's voices and to remind them that. As I, I can't um, quote word for word what Jerry said, especially in that last poem, um, but our voices will not be shrouded, you know? We'll keep speaking and we'll keep being listened to and they won't forget us. So, 
Instagram and we'll just, yeah, we'll, we'll roll through the songs and yeah. As the sun rises upon the eastern sky, as the sound of dawn a breaking, bursting light, he died. He and as the rain pours upon the aching earth, and as the ground cracks open like a breaking heart, he died. And as the wind, it whispers pain through barren trees, as the dust Rises, rises, covers me, Nita. Nanita, as the road, the long forgotten, lonely road, and as the road, the once forgotten guides me home, Nita. Oh, Nita, Tempe. Niki take me a Anita Timbea. Honita Timbea. Anita Timbea. Niki take me a Nita Timbea. Honita Timbea. Nanita Timbea. Niki take me a. Nee <laughs> Nita Timbea Nani take me Nita Timbea Nita Timbea Nita Timbea Great, and that song is just about we keep walking and keep trusting. Uh, so this other one is from our most recent project, which is called Tawasifu Yamoya. And Tawasifu Yamoya is basically translates to the autobiography of the human heart of the heart and this is a song called hold it's about sometimes ourselves. it's a feeling that you always come back you can't really escape it but i think it's uh within those moments the gift is realizing and knowing that one day we'll be fine um, the day may not be today but we will be okay so this is Holmes. Holes, holes through the curtains, holes, holes through my heart, then I. I pass them up, these holes, holes in the curtains, holes, 
ripples in my heart then I I paint them black now they won't let the light in see I got lost in translation in between the lines no one can read I broke myself in the places I didn't ever think what could be and maybe someday I'll be enough not for anyone other than me oh maybe one day I'll be enough for someone in that someone is me hold hold in the silence hold hold in the chaos how should i fix them up when i see holes holes in my wisdom holes holes in my knowledge how do i see the way when my eyes just wouldn't open. See, I get lost in translation. In between the lines, no one can read. I break myself in the places I didn't tell. Could be. And maybe someday I'll be enough, not for anyone other than me. Oh, maybe one day I'll be enough for someone and that someone is me. I still get lost in translation, in between the lines, no can read and i still break myself in the places i didn't ever think one could be and maybe someday i'll be enough not for anyone other than me oh I'll be enough Someone in that someone is me I still get lost In translation In between the lines No one can read And I still break myself In the places I didn't ever think one could be and maybe someday I'll be enough Not for anyone other than me Oh, maybe one day I'll be enough For someone and that someone is me For someone and that someone someone in that someone for someone in that someone uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, is me <laughs> thank you for all your beautiful comments and shout out to your husband for singing hey 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 hey, hey. see you now this other is called Mwangaza this is the last one and we're going to sing together. That's what's going to happen. I mean, it's a very simple line. That just means, Nita Angaza means, um, Nina Mwangaza means, I have the light. Nita Angaza means I will shine the light. So even as we go about our day, as we become those voices that will never be forgotten, um, 
remember that you have the light. It is inside us. You don't need to seek for it anywhere else. You don't. So this is how it goes, and this is what you're going to be seeing. I hey, I hey, Nina Wangaza. Hey, I Hey, I hit Hey, Cause you were covered by the darkness You were hiding in the walls You were breaking at the seams And you were crying, you were crying Cause you were walking with the shadows You were dancing with the pain you are losing every battle. You are fighting. You are fighting. And you are covered by the darkness. You are hiding in the walls. You are breaking at the seams. And you are crying. You are crying. With the shadow, you were dancing with the pain. You were losing every battle. You were fighting, you were fighting. You were covered by the darkness. You were hiding in the walls and you were breaking at the seams and you were fighting, but you're still fighting. So you're still fighting. Oh, you're still fighting. Oh, you're still fighting. Hey, I hate me time. Hey, 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 Nita Angaza Hey, yeah, hey, Nina Mwangaza Nina Mwangaza You guys, my heart <laughs> This is absolutely beautiful This was just Thank absolutely you. beautiful Thank you so much for sharing that I feel like there was so much soul in it. There was so much thank you for having us, which is amazing. So thank you so yeah. much for that. And thank you so much for being here, for supporting us. I hope you've seen all of the love that you're getting in the comments. Yes, because there was a lot we of have. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to everyone for watching. I hope everybody is going to go and follow these guys on socials and just look out for what they're doing. There's so much amazing work that you're doing. And Spreading so much love and positivity. Thank you so much for yes. being here, guys. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So now we're going to move on to the next bit. Um, Belly, I just stepped up for a second, but we're going to move on to the next bit and we're going to get interactive, guys. Everybody's been wanting to talk. Everybody's been wanting to chat. Our podcasters are here. They are ready for us to engage. Belia is back. Welcome back. <laughs> 
and that's how you do it you just slide back in smoothly guys that was beautiful i feel like musical interviews is what everybody needs oh yeah. i just feel so smooth, smooth especially by the last song exactly so we are going to jump into this discussion with our podcasters now yeah we have been talking about highlighting you know putting the spotlight on women that are doing amazing things in the podcasting space mm-hmm. our particular theme or topic for today is serving unrepresented voices through podcasting which yeah. i feel like is already shining through yeah with what exactly. you've seen already it's already shining through yeah so i think we can now bring in our humans let's bring in the humans bring in our podcasters bring in our podcasters <laughs> bring in our podcasters yes Hi, Joy. <laughs> hey. What's hey. up? Right here. Hi, Joy. Yay. Awesome. Hey. Hi. Hi. Awesome. Okay. Mwende is here. Hi. Oh, you guys, look at your beautiful faces. So Hello. So We're so excited, you guys. Yeah, who else is gonna join us? We're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Awesome. We're so excited to get to have you guys here and your videos. Zeta talks. We didn't have a video from you, right? But we had a video from Kasima Podcast. BTS, hi, 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 hi. Yay. Yay. And Liz is here. here. Yay. Welcome to the room, guys. Awesome. I think we have everyone. Yes. We are all here. We are all ready. We're ready to do what we need to do. I think we are ready with mine. Is the there we there go. we go. Mine is the cup. Mine is the cup. Nice. Okay. This is amazing. Ladies, you are beautiful. You are amazing. You are doing amazing things. Inspiration. We're just going to jump into this because everybody is tired of listening to us. They want to hear your voices. So let's start with a bit of an ice break. Yeah. To, to just break the ice in the room to yeah. get the conversation going to get the hype going. So we're going to ask each and the question is what word best describes being a podcaster in Kenya? So maybe we can start with Joy. And then okay, yeah, we can start with Joy. Mm-hmm. Sorry, could you please repeat the question? What word best describes being a podcaster in Kenya? <laughs> All right. Just one word. Yeah. Um, I would say ex- experimental. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Because nice. Um, it, it, it's it's like when you're going through an experiment and there's a lot to learn and a lot to um, review and adjust and bootstrap, it is see. Mm-hmm. So it's a very new platform and a, a very new um, media, rather. So, yeah, experimental. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Joy. Thank you so much. And then next, we have Wendy. What word would you use to describe being a podcaster in Kenya? I would say challenging. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I would say challenging. I think, yeah. It's because it's new and it's like, you know, you're learning as you go. So, but challenging in a good way, not a bad way. No, challenging doesn't mean it's negative. Yeah. Amazing. We Amazing. hear that. Yeah. Amazing. Thank Got you. It. Nice. And okay. then next, Wanjiru. Wanjiru, what word would you use to describe being a podcaster in Kenya? Um, the word I would use is expanding, um, only because um, my conversations have expanded. I have also expanded myself as a person, and so it's a very expanding experience. That's what I would nice. say, expanding. Amazing. I love that. Awesome. And then next. Move on to Liz. Liz, give us your answer. I love your background. So nice and colorful. So nice and colorful. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, ladies. I love, 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 love your energy. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually at Sema Box Studios, so I'm just oh. a few steps away from where Doris is. <laughs> nice. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, so if I had to pick a word, it would be inspiration because I'm constantly drawing inspiration from others, from all these amazing ladies. And our work is also trying to ensure that we inspire yeah. others. So podcasting in Kenya for me has been a lot, a lot of inspiration. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you, Liz. Thank and you. then next, last but not least, Tiru, let us hear from you. What is your Hi, word? ladies. Hi. Hi. Thank you so Hi. much for having me. Um, my word would be educational, educative. Pick one. Um, I think the process has involved learning so much on the job, learning so much about the things we want to talk about, learning how to prephrase things so that they can be received in the best way that you want them to. So, yeah, that's my word. Um, lovely, lovely, lovely. Thank you so much for sharing, ladies. I feel like that was a really nice icebreaker. And from all of the amazing input you ladies have given us so far and with the diversity of your podcasts here, we really want to dive into some of the things that you each experience, but also you each have to offer in the space. And the second question we have for each one of you here, if anyone wants to answer, feel free, right, is... Obviously, the landscape for podcasting in Kenya has changed. Like Doris has said previously, it was very male-dominated, um, and now we have more female voices coming up, and we have more female voices in very diverse spaces that are now confident enough to speak on their stories and to share their experiences. What aspects would you would you contribute? Would you say would con have contributed to more women feeling more confident to start their own podcasts? What things have been put in place? to actually cut to, um, what's the word? Encourage these yeah, women to start these podcasts. What are the things that you ladies believe have been put in place? I think we can throw it to anyone who'd like to answer. Feel free, this is your time to shine. Maybe we'll start with Zeta Talks, just so that people don't talk over each other. Zeta Talks, what would you say have been the different aspects that have encouraged more women to start podcasting in Kenya? Um, I mean, I would definitely say just seeing is believing. So the fact that there are a lot more women podcasts um, already on the ground, especially like with the Data Podcast Incubator, definitely encourages other women to want to start a podcast. Because if you're seeing that other women are doing it, then, it, you know, if you feel more confident to start. Then also, yeah. I would say like the, um, like right now, the number one podcast in Kenya is actually by a woman um, whose name is also Adele. <laughs> And so, yeah, so um, for me, she was an inspiration because I saw what she was doing and the work that she's been doing. She's very, very consistent, number one podcast in Kenya, um, you know, doing a lot of really good stuff. And so for me, just seeing her doing it, um, I was like, okay, it's possible then to be able to do it and to, to be consistent and to really um, try different things. So I think just being able to see other people doing it, that representation, it definitely helps. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. Thank you so much, Wendy. That was beautiful. Seeing is definitely believing. And um, Joy, do you have anything to add? Do you believe there's other aspects that have been contributing to more female voices? Yeah, definitely. I kind of um, would like to also shed the spotlight on a lot of women movements that have been going on around um, the continent, the country, globally. I feel like um, we are at a time where um, there's more appreciation for what women can bring to the table. And so because of that, um, women taking up these platforms uh, feels easier than it was before because um, of the appreciation, like our voices don't go unnoticed and podcasting being the way it is, there's like very few barriers to entry and with platforms like for example, the Dada Podcasting Incubator you find that you might not know the back end of the pro of the process but somehow you just um, are able with the support of SemaWorks of course you're able to launch a fully finished product. So I feel like um, the combination of all women's voices and us yeah. having to empower each other in one way or another has helped a great deal. Amazing. 
Thank you so much, Joy. And we totally agree because it's definitely a team effort. It can be um, a woman like Adele that has the best performing podcast in Kenya right now from an incubator space like Step Simmer Box, just being able to provide women like yourself this podcast. It's beautiful and it's inspiring. And from there, I think the next question is, yeah. Adele, like, mm -hmm. yeah, so maybe we can jump into, I know that Joy already started talking about it, but mm -hmm. maybe we can, you know, just have your use this as a vulnerable space yeah. to just share um, based off our experiences, based off your experiences as podcasters. Mm -hmm. So what challenges do you feel like you have faced in the podcasting space? We've spoken generally, you know, about, you know, people not having experience and they're not being inclusion mm -hmm. and, you know, people wanting to speak out about issues, but what do you feel like practically you have had challenges with in this podcasting game, whether your podcasting is flourishing or you started it last week, what challenges do you feel like you are facing? Oh, I'm going to throw it to Liz. Liz, let's go. Let's mm -hmm. hear you. You look ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so for me, I'm here representing Wakilisha Podcast, uh, which is a brainchild of Wakilisha Initiative, an organization I founded uh, in 2018. But I also do produce a podcast for Oxfam International called Equals. So, yes, I've been in podcasting for a few years now. And one thing I'd say has been a challenge is editing. So as a producer from that perspective, and I was so, so, so happy to see that the first session we had today was on editing, right? Because it can be such a challenge. You have amazing content you've recorded with an amazing guest probably can't get them for the second time and then yeah. something was horrible <laughs> with the sound and you're all over trying to figure out okay so what am i going to do with this so editing is is, is quite something if you're editing for yourself and then if you're not then it becomes another whole financial you know hurdle if you have to get you know someone else to edit for you um and then I think the other thing is analytics, right? If you're in this space, if you're going to get someone to partner, you need to say, uh, you know, these are the people who are listening, this, they're in these areas, they're in these countries. But if you've interacted with podcast analytics, you know there's like a million rules <laughs> to how they measure analytics um, so, and can be very different on different platforms. So that those two have been my greatest challenges so far. Okay. okay. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. Who else would like to jump on? Shiru, would you like to jump on and give us some, some insights, some yes. of your two cents? Um, yeah, sure. Um, for me and my partner, I think um, when you're dealing with an abstract, subjective topic, packaging the content can become a challenge sometimes because it's very opinion-based sometimes. And also yeah. it's you have what you want to say to people and you have what people are willing to hear. And so like towing that line of not being very preachy and not being, yeah, being more objective in a subjective world, I guess, yeah, has been a challenge. Okay. okay. So, okay. yeah. So who else, who else would love yeah. to jump on, guys? Who else would love to jump on? And just give us some of the okay. Tips. I'll just jump on. Yeah, I'll just jump on the question because um, the kind of podcast I do is a focus on governance, a focus on politics, a focus on civic responsiveness, social responsibility, and a lot of these are things that have been sort of neglected, but not entirely out of will and, and people wanting to but because of the circumstances that we find ourselves in and just trying to rope youth back um, to, to, to be aware and to actually care, especially the young Gen Z millennials. So yeah. it's, it's quite a challenge to, to, to even make people interested because mm. at this age also, there's a lot more that you can watch on YouTube. There's a lot that you yeah. could find on Insta. So just to have yeah. someone get to Instagram for politics and to understand governance has been a challenge but we think that with podcasting is interesting because as you keep going on you find your audience and you find people that relate to your content so 
yeah, it's a challenge, but then again, with a solution in the long term. <laughs> yeah. And then thank yeah. you so much for sharing. That's awesome, Joy. It's about having perspective, long-term vision. Mm -hmm. And then Wanjiru, mm -hmm. what challenges have you faced with, with your podcast specifically as well? Hi, Wanjiru. Did you hear All the right. question? Thank you so much. I hope I'm, I'm, well, I hope you can hear me. So, yes. um, Yes, I'm saying I hope you can hear me. Um, are we are we good? Okay, yes. fine. So thank you yeah. so much, and thank you for organizing this, and, and thank you for having me. So one of the challenges I had um, when you asked me about what I think about podcasting and what word comes to my mind, I said expanding, because when I began the first, I began as a political commentary. I wanted to talk about politics and how politics sits in women's lives. And then uh, while I continued to do my research, I found out that it's not just the actual politics of the politics, it's also many other things, you know, that's it. So my challenge at the beginning was, how do I now expand this conversation from a political space to also include social and economic, uh, uh, like social and economic decisions that affect women? So for me, adjusting to that and making sure that I'm not too political and I'm also not too, like I'm not, um, struggling to find the balance for me has been the challenge yes so, so the balance between the political the social the economical and not putting more weight on one because all of these things are important and all of these things affect women exactly yeah. exactly wow I just like <sighs> anyway it, it sounds like all of you are coming from a place of experience which is amazing and i know that some of these things as you go down the line, as you improve your podcast, as you gain more experience, I know that some of these things will be, you know, in the past when it comes to packaging and this and that. So it makes total sense. So I think that kind of segues into our last question that mm -hmm. we have for today. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the last question, right, is obviously based off of the young woman, the young girl that's sitting at home watching you right now, listening to your inspirational chat about how you're doing your podcast and why you started your podcast. What advice do you have? for the young girl like myself sitting at home listening to you. If I want to start a podcast or if I just want to go after my dream, mm -hmm. what advice do you have for, for someone like me? What are some you? of the things you wish you knew? <laughs> yes, before you started podcasting. Like, these are the things I wish somebody told me. Can we start with Mwende? Let's start with Mwende. Everybody has to give advice, by the way. Mwende... You okay. All of your Great. I know. I feel like okay. I'm the first to go. Okay. Um, okay. So it's good to probably be a, a roundabout answer, but I would say that um, you already have what you need, mm -hmm. and what you need to do is just to figure out how to build on it. What I mean okay. by that is that um, I didn't realize until this year that I've literally been doing all these, like all the things that I have been doing um, for the last like ten years. Um, have actually been leading to what I'm doing now. It's just that I didn't realize I didn't realize it. So I've always been doing women centric things. Um, I started with an organization in my early twenties um, called Kiketele. So it was basically trying to bring together women who are artists because I started off as a, I used to be an um, a poet <laughs> back in the day. And mm -hmm. then um, so it made sense now that I again have a women because Zeda is actually a women's, um, it's a startup that focuses on women, media, and events. And then Zeda Talks is our podcast. Mm -hmm. So I had, like, I was basically building the skills that I needed to get to where I, I, you know, where I'm now, where I'm confident in what I am doing and what my purpose is. So I would say for young women, just follow your heart. I know it sounds, uh, people will be like, that sounds so cliche, but it's really true. Like you, your gut knows where you need to go and, um, what you need to do you just need to be like okay what feels right and and go with it and then also trust your voice your voice matters and don't think that you don't have anything to say or you don't have a story to tell because whatever you think is not important enough um it's probably really powerful and i really am a huge huge advocate of um african content and women especially african women content on the internet because if you look at the statistics there's just not enough we're not really represented as much as other um you know cultures um especially from the west they basically the internet is 
very uh, Western dominated. And so this kind of content podcast um, and other kinds of content is so important. It's important for us to see ourselves. It's important for us to hear ourselves. And so I definitely want to encourage um, any young woman, especially who feels that she has a story to tell or just wants to hear her voice out there to just give it a try. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be watched by a million people, even if it's 10 of your friends only um, who are listening or watching. It's still important. You're still contributing. And so, yeah, go ahead and do it. Oh, love it. Love it. Amazing. 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 Thank you so much for sharing. And then next we Come have on. Joy. Okay. Um, as a parting shot, I would just tell anyone that's watching out there, especially young women, to just begin. Because a lot of the times, the hurdles that you encounter are mental. Like, no one is going to come to your house and tell you, don't do a podcast. It's probably that um, you feel you're not good enough, you feel you don't have enough content or whatnot. But begin, because as soon as you start on a journey, whatever it is, that's when you begin to have the interest to learn, to grow, and to expand your networks in that arena. So I'm saying this for anyone with a creative venture because, well, my heart lies in the in creativity. I'm also a writer, and I'm, I'm writing poetry at the moment. I'm writing a lot of stuff, and I'm, I intend to just expand my, expand my avenues in the arts. And um, the block much as there'll be creativity blocks, there'll be whatnot in the journey, as long as you are inspired to start, it's always one foot in front of the other. Don't think of the, of, of how big and, um, I don't know, don't think of the hurdles just yet. As long as you put one foot, um, it'll be easier to put another foot and just step by step you get there. Oh, that's beautiful, Joy. Amazing. Lovely. Thank you. It's so the advice much. that we need for yes, life. For life. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, should we who should we jump to now? Liz, maybe you can jump to Liz. Yeah, Liz. Do I give signals or something? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Telepathy girl, we can hear you. <laughs> um for me, I'd say define yourself. Don't let anyone else out there define who you are or who you're going to be it, it's it all has to come from you how you want to see yourself and how you want others to see you has to come from you um, and the reason i'm so keen on saying this is at wakilisha we work to promote access to justice for children in conflict with the law so these are kids who've been accused of committing crime and they are facing charges most probably in court so our aim is one, to find them legal representation, to mentor them so that, you know, there's rehabilitative justice and all that. And something that you'll see with this, um, be it girls and boys who are in this system, they've already been told by so many people constantly that you're this and you're that. You know, yeah. there's so much stigma by being in this position. And it happens to us as well, whether or not we're children in conflict to the law or, or as adults. And then that holds you back. So you have this yeah. voice as a woman. You want to speak about this, but then you start telling yourself, oh, but so-and-so said my voice is like this. Or so-and-so said mm -hmm. I can't do this. But what are you saying? How are you defining yeah. yourself? Are you a podcaster? Yeah. Then start podcasting. Yes. So, yes define yourself and don't let anyone else define you amazing oh you guys i feel like i'm talking to like right. my older sister or like, something it's fire <laughs> okay let's jump to one juru let's hear what you have to say what advice do you have for a young you is she in here yeah oh, oh did she I think she oh, jumped we off. Lost one shield. Maybe we can move. Oh, we lost her. Okay, maybe shield. we can move to Shiro. Yeah. Um, so my thing would be you are powerful as you are. You don't need permission from anyone to be. You don't need permission from anyone to do anything. If you if you just decide to do whatever you've decided to do, that's all the permission you need for yourself. And that's I amazing. say that because wow. A lot of the times when we when we talk about um, GBV cases and things like that, you find that there were already red flags in the beginning, but you don't trust yourself enough to, to trust your judgment. You'd rather trust somebody else's judgment to come and tell you this is a good situation to be in. While you're the one in the situation, you're the one with the most experience. So you're the one who knows what you're talking about. 
So feel the fear and do it anyway. If you, you're being afraid to live a bad situation, yeah, be afraid and live. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Wow. So yeah. 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 And that's what Mary had a little laugh. Maybe we will do it. <laughs> Yes, Doris. Doris. Do you want to drop your two oh my god. Like you've been sitting there just watching us. We've been watching you two sis. <laughs> um I didn't I don't know what else can I say that the ladies haven't already said. Um my advice would be uh do not be afraid to start. Don't mm. and also don't be afraid to fail. Um mm. what you normally say is fail upwards. So today you failed tomorrow fail a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less and eventually um your podcast will be will have metamorphed you know it's just the spirit of kaizen 1% improvement every day in whatever it is that you're doing um i think also don't wait for conditions to be perfect yes right? because they'll, they'll never be perfect they'll never be perfect start with what you have <clears throat> in your hand and move from there improve daily from there ask for help where you you don't know ask for help where you can't um and also i think the thing that i've learned is talk to other podcasters collaborate um listen to their podcasts because um a lot of times we say i have a podcast and i also i don't listen to other people's podcasts how how do you expect to get um support from the podcasting community so that's the thing that i try and encourage all the ladies at the dada podcasting incubator listen to each other's pod- podcast collaborate on their podcast there's already some collaborations that have happened here at at the dada podcasting incubator um and and see what's in your community just open expand expand yourself don't 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 be in a silo you know listen listen and see what other people are doing is what i would say mm amazing mm. amazing that was beautiful doris i think in that same breath do you want to maybe share shed a light on what people could apply for in terms of the dada in, incubator if they're podcasters what do you guys offer when's the next intake mm-hmm. all of those amazing things somebody <laughs> say Then even me, I'm in Kenya. Even me, I want to come and do this thing. <laughs> so what are the next steps? <laughs> oh, okay. So the Data Podcasting um, Incubator, we wanted to give. I believe the package was ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars worth of recording time and equipment. Right. So we are spending. We're not spending actual physical cash. but the time in studio would be you know would amount to that um we say uh we want to give the podcasters at some point a soft introduction to donors the ones that we are in contact with um and opportunities some have already happened some they've created for themselves um some things that we are also you know in uh, in the background working on um the other thing i'd say is where can you where do people apply the first mm, the first cohort was by invitation so we invited all these ladies to come and uh be part of the dada podcast incubator the next incubation is soon to be announced so just uh keep it keep checking sema box um some of our social media handles and our website and also our friends at um Africa Podfest they are very big supporters of Stemma Box as well um we'll definitely let people know when the next cohort is coming we are actually very excited this first cohort has taught us a lot and we are, we we can't wait to see <coughs> what's next Awesome. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. So if you're in Kenya, you heard what Doris said. Go and check out Summerbox. See how you can be involved. Contact them. Send them an email. 
this is amazing. When you said what fifteen thousand dollars worth, I was like, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of. It's a that's lot a of lot money. of. That's Even a lot of. Even if it's in time and and you know production time and whatever, it is, that is a lot of money yeah. because that you can take as an investment yeah. towards the rest of exactly. your podcast future. Yeah. So that's exactly. amazing. Correct. Everybody in here Correct. is amazing. I am so inspired. Same. <laughs> same, same, same. Ladies, thank you so much for your time. And everybody watching, make sure that you're supporting these amazing Kenyan podcasters. Make sure you check them out on our socials. We've got all of their handles on there. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming in and giving us all of your amazing gems. This was beautiful. We can't wait to come to Kenya next year, February 12th. Please. And just meet all the person. We will be there. We're coming. <laughs> Some of Don't us are ready to 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 meet you guys we are ready to meet you guys <laughs> it's going to be amazing guys yes. well, yeah to it. yes okay i think we're back sorry no, we're guys <laughs> we disappeared for a minute but we're just saying thank you to all of you guys. We wish you all of the best. Um, we hope that everybody is going to find you on social media so that they can follow your amazing journey. I'm already following some of you. Yes. So just look out for those requests. Um, yeah, because I'm just great. I'm I'm just loving all of the energy that you have and what you're doing. I'm very interested in where you're going. Amazing. So where do you hope your podcast will be in a year? Ooh, we have a question from the comments. Yeah, as you guys leave, where do you hope your podcast will be Ooh. in a year? Next year this time. Who would like to answer? Mm, I'll pick on Liz. I'm going to pick on Liz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys, I'm waiting for you to come and see if this also happens in Nairobi. <laughs> oh, no, we're in <laughs> We're in <laughs> <laughs> um, so in a year's time I want to be able to tell as many stories from across Kenya and possibly even from across if not Africa, East Africa of as many children in conflict with the law and various stakeholders, so advocates who are representing them pro bono um, people who are offering psychosocial support, people who are helping them you know, turn their lives around and people who are raising awareness so a lot of our work right now is in Nairobi and even the people we have on our podcast are doing a lot of work in Nairobi but I want to move out I want to go to Kenya, I want to go to East Africa and if I can Africa Yeah. Yes, come to Zambia, we're ready for you this is, I'll this be there. is exactly, come, we're ready we are coming <laughs> <laughs> amazing, and Zeta Talks where do you hope your podcast will be in a year? Great question. <laughs> so for me, I'm definitely hoping that we'll be at um at the end of season two, going into season three, because you know I really want that longevity as a podcast mm -hmm. and consistency. Mm -hmm. And then also, I really hope that um, because the po the podcast platforms different women's voices to tell their stories, um, and so I'm really hoping that um at that point we'll be doing a traveling uh podcast in the mm -hmm. sense that you can do live recordings um, because we do have events already, but um, mm -hmm. now incorporating the podcast in our events so that you can have um, women meeting each other um, yeah. at our podcast recordings. And of course, um, like Liz said, um, the dream is definitely mm -hmm. not just to be focused in Kenya, but to try and um, get across Africa. Amazing. Awesome. Big dreams, big things. Love it for you. Love it for you. And Joy, you. where do you hope your podcast will be in a year? Okay, so in a year, the plan is to incorporate more youth from across the rest of Kenyan counties because where we've been focusing on has mostly been Nairobi and we've had guests from like a very neighboring county called Kiambu. So we hope that our podcast inspires more youth to actually put on the big boots and the big hats to just know that once you're 18, you've hit the mark to be an adult and you're ready to be the next Kenyan leader, possibly. Or, yeah, so the, the idea is to expand this beyond just the capital city and get to the counties to understand um, and also <coughs> showcase the things that young people are doing for their communities because even as we spoke here, once you see it 
as Mwende had said, once you see it, it's easy for you to believe it. So we hope to inspire that spirit amongst young people. Oh, mm. beautiful. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And last but not least, Chiru. What do you hope to see? Chiru? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, I think for... For us, the goal is definitely to complete our second season and to remain consistent. Um, we hope to expand the conversation around mental health and around um, childhood trauma and those types of things, and especially to remove it from the bubble of our lives that is Nairobi and to go into the, the other counties and to hear how people are living on the ground and what mental health looks like for them in taking care of themselves and and, and partnering with organizations that can help further that agenda. Amazing, wow. amazing, amazing. Uh, ama- you are also amazing, and we are just ready mm. to see your podcast so <clears throat> just beautiful globally. Once again, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate yes. you. We can't thank wait you. to see what you're going to win. We're ready to celebrate <laughs> you and just do the most. Yes. <laughs> Have a beautiful day, ladies. Bye. 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 I don't know about you. Inspired.com. Inspired.com. Period. <laughs> Joe, please, we're tired of talking. It's your turn. Uh, 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 you are so right. My notebook, my notebook is full. I've just been like so many notes. So many. <laughs> It was so yes. good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank back you, to everyone. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and thank you. Tomorrow, don't be shocked. <laughs> no, we shall not be shocked. Join, join the journey. Thank you as so you much. For as you as you want, you know. Yes, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. You're yeah. welcome. I have before before we let you before we let you go on um, with your day. Um, I just, I'd like to know, like, what's what stood out for you? Just, like, highlights from, there's been so much richness, so much depth, so much soul today. But what are you taking away, like, right now, this, you know, yeah. fresh, fresh, before you process? Okay. I think for me, it's the fact that there's so many, even just within Africa, there's so many voices. And there's so many voices um, from people about different things because I never would have thought that somebody can just come up with a podcast just based on youth and, you know, all of these, you know, people being shut up, people being in prison. It's so specific, but there's so much content around it. So even the reason why I'm making this joke to be like, don't be surprised if I start a podcast tomorrow is because there could be something that I'm looking at that is so specific, but then there could be so much content mm-hmm. around it and so much um probably potential listenership mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. these are conversations that people are having mm-hmm. but just not you know on a national scale yeah. or you know on a global scale yeah so yeah. for me that's the thing that stood out because right. these ladies have literally stepped out they yeah. said yeah it was cool for us to sit in the background yeah but we need to be heard because women this because mm-hmm. children this yes exactly <laughs> thank you same same i think for same. me what right. yes same like same, I agree, right? So, like, it's just so cool to see that a lot of voices that we previously assumed were not as important as other voices, for example, mental health voices or voices in regarding women who um, need policies around childbirth and curfew and what policies do we have that also support specific women things, right? Those voices matter. Before, I always used to think, no, maybe we should just talk about it in the home or we should just keep it with ourselves in our social media chats or just on the WhatsApp group. No, we need to have these conversations everywhere all the time. It needs to be common. It needs to be part of our everyday conversations. Mm -hmm. And what these podcasters are doing, it's normalizing previously stigmatized um, topics, previously Mm -hmm. stigmatized issues stuff that we used to see and be like, oh, no, let's not talk about that. Yeah. We can't talk about yeah. um, right. child labor. Yeah, keep things. it to the low. Because this yeah. is Africa at the end mm-hmm. of the day. There's mm-hmm. so many things where it's like, especially as a woman, keep quiet, sit down, take a step back. Take a step back. But now they're like, the no. <laughs> they said no. Yeah. It's like Rosa Parks when she said, I'm not going to stand up and give you this. Yeah. I'm going to keep yeah. sitting. That's literally mm, what yeah. they're doing. It doesn't seem yeah. that significant right now but like 10 years from now five years from now with their longevity mm. and i love the fact that they have
have the mindset of longevity and keeping this going. If season two, season three, season four, this is how people win awards. This is how we change the narrative. This is how we, we make women feel more confident in their own team. Yes. This is important. Do you guys know that what we're doing is important? Yeah. <laughs> you people. <laughs> Guys, you have guys. said it. I don't That's think it. we could have said it better. You <laughs> said it. You said it. You said it for all of us. Oh, yeah, there's a question that's, that's come in yeah. for you, for you both. Are you also podcasters? Maybe you could also share some lessons slash synergies from Zambia, your experience as female podcasters. Okay, so I'm a podcaster. I have a podcast called Conversations That Bloom that I started this year specifically because I just got frustrated with seeing the number of podcasts mm. out there that were like, oh, lifestyle, and then also, oh, Jesus. Oh, but also like business and also Jesus this side. So I just wanted to put everything in one place so that people could see that you don't have to separate your faith and your spirituality from your everyday life and everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Yeah. So for me personally, mm -hmm. it was just a thing of me trying to continue creating conversations mm -hmm. around topics like porn, mm -hmm. topics like money, topics like relationship issues, um, topics like early marriage things, all mm -hmm. of those things and mm -hmm. how they do how they fit in the faith how can we relate these things back to jesus it's one it's thing, one thing. Yeah. it's not separate yeah. it's just all together mm -hmm. so, i feel like it's important because yeah. at the end of the day oh okay it's back it's back, okay. Okay. It's back. <laughs> yeah it's so back. at the end of the day it's just about conversation so i don't have a podcast but I am very much mental health inclined. Definitely. So this yeah. is something that I've brought in like a couple of DMs that yeah. people are like, can you do like mm -hmm. a video series mm -hmm. about this or whatever? Mm -hmm. So maybe the next step mm -hmm. for me is podcast. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. have to think mm -hmm. and pray about it. Let's see yeah. what Jesus says. Hallelujah. Because at the end of the day, it's about <laughs> normalizing conversations. And in Zambia, I feel like if the podcasting space is new, but they have, there are mm -hmm. some people that have been doing it for a long time and have done big things. Yeah. But it's fresh yeah. ground. Like yeah. there's so many things. So if any of you want to come and collaborate with us, please call us. Ring ring. Ring ring. Ring ring. Yes. And and of course we have the, the recording up on our YouTube channel for um from last month's Discovery Tour, which was with amazing our oh, such kick ass Zambian podcasters. Yeah. So for anyone who's watching this today for the first time, please head on to our video listing and check out the interactive session there. And we had, oh, we had such beautiful gems as well. And there was an exchange also from Middle East and North Africa. And then a whole squad of fire Zambian podcasters also talking about yes. this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Belia and Adele. Also, I'm, I'm seeing now that you have a brand, B&A. Like <laughs> mm. <laughs> BNA are such lovely hosts. Great session. Great session. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you as always. Love, love, love. Yeah. Yes. From Zambia. Showcasing the sauce. Also, you know, some people talk about sometimes you just need to, you know, not talk about the sauce, but just show it. You you yeah. bring the sauce in caps like <laughs> <Here it is. laughs> oh, thank yes. you so so much um joe and we, we we have like our closing our closing shop i mean we, of course we'd love to stay and party but like we have our closing oh, yeah. shot closing remarks uh, for everyone um, yeah um, so for me and everyone at Africa Podfest, uh, we uh, really love the support, the participation, the engagement. Um, every single podcaster who uh, took their time today to join us from the Data Podcast Incubator. Thank you, uh, Sema Box. Uh, thank you, Hindenburg. Thank you to Africa No Filter who are are um, carrying us through the discovery tour um, in many ways. Thank you so much. Uh, we would like to thank Yellow Ray Digital, that's BNA, uh, Belia and Adele and your team. Thank you so much. 
And we'd like to thank our tech producer, Tevin, who's behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Um, one of the things that we are really looking forward to is that this is stop number two of four stops. So next month, Africa Podfest turns one year old on November. Sorry, two years old. Two years old. <laughs> so we turn two on uh, November 27th. And it's a Saturday. And we are having another stop which we will mm -hmm. announce very, very soon. Uh, check mm -hmm. out next week where we are going next. Um, mm -hmm. And we will be celebrating with good baked goods. So of course you'll see some lovely cupcakes. You'll see us. And we are looking forward to celebrating with you next month. And then of course, save the date, February 12th is Africa Podcast Day. You'll be hearing a lot more about that in the next couple of weeks. I know you've been sending us DMs, uh, emails, how can you get involved? And uh, we are excited to get back to you very soon on that. Yes, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Discovery Tour, the Road to Africa Podcast Day 2022. We are marching towards <laughs> February 12th. Uh, and it's such a great mar march. It's, it's, we are marching and partying yeah, as we go. So yes. it's very fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much and see you next time. See you November 27th. Yes. Bye. Bye. <laughs>